So, the other day I went to the swimming pool and, you know, I'm not proud of it. But I've got to say, while I was at, you know, I had a little wee in the deep end. And um, and the uh, lifeguard told me off. He, he shocked me, actually. I nearly fell in. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the Black Dog, episode 95. I'm Lee. I'm Darren. And I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm sure. <laughs> um, yes, and there is no gym. There is no gym, no, because he is having a well-deserved break because he is off on his anniversary. We heard that mm. there was a maypole involved. Yeah, and a lot of skipping. <laughs> Apparently, he's got he's being fitted out for a bear costume, <laughs> but, but we can't need we can neither confirm nor deny this. There are pies being made. <laughs> Don't <laughs> there's, 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 a, there's a joke. There's there's all sorts of jokes there. You don't want to go there. Not this early <laughs> into the cast. <laughs> too early. You, you too mean I, you mean I can't say? Is that a ginger pube? <laughs> <laughs> what filling is it cream oh no oh. <laughs> mm. well, anyway yes well welcome to the uh new listeners and goodbye new listeners <laughs> um <laughs> so yes hello everyone welcome to episode 95 um we will be doing the usual stuff we will be seeing how everyone's week's been and then we will, if there's any feedback going on, because we have, to, I haven't checked yet, we'll read any feedback out. If there's any outstanding from last week's movie, which was my choice, which was Calvary, and then we will move on to this week's movie, which is your choice, Elton, which was Midsummer. And I, I was going to say straight off the bat, is it Midsummer or Midsummer or Midsummer? Well, I'm saying Midsummer. I'm saying about. Eight grand's worth of therapy. That's what I'm fucking saying. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Well, we'll get to that soon. And I'm still looking. I'm still waiting for John Nettles to turn up. To be honest, <laughs> and start solving crimes, but he never did. I'm hoping there's an extended version where he turns up and solves the problem with a scone killer or something. I don't know. I haven't watched me some of others for years. Um. Anyway, but for, before we get to any of that, and I've run out of um. Brew dog beer, so I'm kind of a bit upset now. But um, while I'm while I'm looking at looking at the bottom of the beer bottle, um, uh, Elton, do you want to tell us about your week, mate? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, because all the format has changed now, hasn't it? Okay. So what do you um, mean? Well, Jim's not here, is he? So no, no, no. See, normally it would be Jim first, but I know it's you, sir. It's me. Okay. Mm. So I have two things from this week. One which happened last year and then it happened again this year so i will come back to that in a minute mm, juicy dangler but i had mm. uh, I, i've been digging around all the stuff that i have in the garage and just going through some bits and trying to throw some stuff out and i came across my game boys <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah they were tied up no uh, uh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> Fellas, my, I wonder where I put you. <laughs> my Allegedly. Nintendo, my original Nintendo ah. Game Boys. Okay, cool. Right. And Black somehow and I, I've, I've got two. I don't know how I got two. I know I, I bought one. Uh, I bought one of a friend. I, hmm. I somehow acquired another one along the way. Hmm. So I thought, oh, okay, let's have a little look at these. Because, hmm. uh, you know, when you have that moment of, I really want to play this game now. Mm -hmm. I just I just want to play it, enjoy mm. it for ten minutes. I know it will last ten minutes maximum, and then I can put it away. Yeah. And so I opened it all up and put all the batteries in and turned it on, and nothing. Oh, oh no. is it dead? Nothing. Mm. So, oh Christ! Corroded so, contacts. No? Well, yes, it was actually. Oh. It was. So I took the batteries out, looked in the back, blew everywhere. I was like, oh, okay. So I put mm -hmm. that to the side. Mm -hmm. Picked up the other one, mm -hmm. put the batteries in, mm -hmm. turned it on, light came on. Nice. You got the little da ding. Yay. But you had lots of lines missing on the, oh, uh, on on the screen. On the screen. So I thought, dead pixels. Oh. 
you know, I can fix these. I can do this. <laughs> so, <laughs> doom, doom. <laughs> If yeah. any man can, Elton can. Fire it up. Fire up the fire up the eighteen team. Go on. Uh, imagine that moment in Commander where he's just loading lots of grenades and wiping lots of makeup on his face and basically <laughs> me getting my screwdrivers out. Nice. And Madam, fetch me my tools. <laughs> and so I proceeded to take them all apart. Mm. I had cleaned up all the contacts checking them out and it wasn't working and i got my multimeter out and i was checking and doing the continuity and stuff like that i thought i might have to go a bit deeper into this but luckily enough i spent about an hour cleaning all this stuff up bob's your uncle it works and that it yeah it all all came back to life put it all back together put a game in and it was oh brilliant this is amazing Mm -hmm. uh played the game for about 10 minutes put it down because they're all (laughs) terrible (laughs) Yes. Oh god. They are all terrible, bar none. I, even Mario is mm. it's great. You, uh, but it is still terrible as well. Mm. You, you know, you find out with emulators, everybody gets emulator amnesia. Right? Because mm-hmm. they they do this, they load up in there, oh god, Spectrum emulator. Yes, mm. get in there. And then you spend three hours on the emulator playing every single game in the collection well, for about two seconds each. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That looks great on the screen. Okay, well, I'm bored, but it says put another one on. Yep. It's like, what? why did I ever think these games were great? Yeah, you just need to scratch that itch now and again, yeah. don't you? Yeah. That's all it is. Funny enough, I did something very similar this week. I wasn't going to put it on my week because, yeah, I did exactly the same. <laughs> I pulled out this um, thing called Capcom Stadium, which has just been released. Okay. All right. And it's been released on all the platforms, on PlayStation and Xbox and PC. And you go on there, and you've got an arcade full of Capcom games. And all you do is you either you get some that are free. Oh, and is some that the that one that's buy. got turtles on it? Yep, it's got turtles on it. It's oh. got um, it's got 1942. It's got Commando, Strider, um, Bionic Commando. Uh, it's got um, well, fucking about twenty different versions of Street Fighter and <laughs> Reach Fighter. <laughs> Beat Wiper. Exactly. EX Alpha Plus Turbo Extreme X- Excel yep. Vibe 212A. I don't know. It's All the non-licensed it. ones as well, the ones that try to avoid copyright. No, no, it's, that's, like, it's with, Capcom. With <laughs> and that, oh, it is. Oh, of course it is, yeah. Because I was going to say, there's those rip-off ones with like, you know, Ren and Caillou mm. um, and, no. and Blonka. Yeah, no, no, no. This even has things like ghosts and goblins, and I, I bought, I saw it, and I thought, oh, you know what? There's a six, there's a deal, sixteen pounds. You buy every game in the arcade. I paid sixteen quid, downloaded forty four games. Wow! And then all of a sudden, I went, I played every single one of them for precisely seven and a half seconds. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, you do it, and it mm. stops you from buying. I've, I, you know what? Every time I see the mini Amiga come up. Mm in the feed on or the mini Commodore 64 I think oh oh I never had yep. a Commodore 64 but I know plenty of people who did and I've played on there and I really liked what I saw yeah. oh oh I think I'll get that and then it's as if you know I'm you know I walk in the room and go no 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 Darren come on come on what have you what emulators have you got on your devices oh let's see you've got MAME you got uh, you got about thirty different Spectrum emulators. How many times have you played those in the last what three or four years? Fucking zero. Yeah, mm. that's it. <laughs> yeah, I get it totally. Yeah, mm. Mm. but your your Game Boy, you got them working though. Uh, yeah, the second one, I took it apart. Yeah, and resoldered all the joints on the the mm. screen mm. and that's just a joy to behold because you have to have the thing on right and all the contrast turned down so you can see all the pixels oh and yeah. so the the screen goes black apart from the dead lines that you have and then you mm. rub your um yeah. uh, <laughs> as soon as i said rub i thought no he's gonna pick up euphemism, on that. euphemism. Yeah. <laughs> i was gonna say rub my hot wand on it but what i meant was my soldering <laughs> iron you meant uh, hot ones. Yeah, I didn't mean hot ones. Mean, you, you, meant game you, boys. you meant what you meant. Come on. <laughs> Rubbing your hot wand on your Game Boys. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbing your, your, your hot wand on your Game Boys. 
and and just the joy of seeing them pop back into life. What the Game Boys? Yeah. Or your yeah, hot the, ones. the Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> or your hot ones. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been swimming, haven't I? No, sorry. Just... <coughs> Let me out, mister. Mm. Uh, mm. But yeah, I got them working, so that was that was good. And once again, I played a game for about precisely one level, lost a life, and as soon as you die, you're like, well, I've had yeah, enough of that. that. Thank you very much. Mm. And now they're back on the shelf where they will belong until about another three years when I go, do you know what? I fancy a game of that. <laughs> And then do the whole cycle all over again. No, no. What you do now is you sell them on eBay, mate. That's the thing. Properly working. Why yep. not? I can't. Can't. Because because I love them so much. But you've got two of them, for fuck's sake. I know. And that's a stupid thing. Elton. Elton, listen. Listen to him, right? He speaks sense. What you do, right? Okay. You do sell them on eBay. You sell them for a really high price. And then you take the money. Mm. You buy a really powerful... Uh, computer system, and then you put a, a Game Boy <laughs> emulator on there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and then I don't you know play that. it on there. I'll go, be honest. Fuck this shit. And turn it off. I'll be honest with you. I don't think you're going to get it. I don't think you're going to buy a really powerful system with a Nintendo Game Boy free games uh, pre owned 21 quid on yeah. eBay. And that's with eight bids. So I, I think you, I think you're probably best off just keeping them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's not it's not a seller's market out there for, for Game Boys. If I'm honest, well, it, it, even if I have two, then at least I can use the cable that came with them mm. at least once, just to join them up for once. <laughs> oh, oh, but then you need then, then you need two people. I don't yeah. care about that. It, as long as I've connected them, and I I was that person that connected them together. You were, and it yeah. was impressive. Yeah. Mm. Um. <laughs> so the second thing I don't know if you remem- remember mm. uh, yes. I think it was around about this time last year mm-hmm. I had to visit a job in Chelmsford where mm. I got dive bombed by uh, seagulls oh yes mm. well I had to go back to that job today didn't I Did uh-huh yes and the seagulls are nesting again aren't they good timing oh good work and so well done. I, I went to this job and Bloke said, okay, right, here's the keys. Gave me all the keys. I went upstairs. And as I was going up the, the stairs and just about to open the door to the roof, he went, mm. uh, the seagulls are nesting again, so you may want to look out. <laughs> I went, oh, fuck's sake. Really, mm-hmm. are they? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, so what I did mm. this time, I crept out of the – I opened the door very slowly. And there mm. was nothing in the sky, beautiful blue sky, not a, not a cloud to be seen. Mm-hmm. very surreal not a fucking seagull either mm-hmm. uh, so i opened the door and i just tippy toed all the way to the edge where i needed to be and right. i could see the door that i needed to get into and i thought okay i mm-hmm. can't see any seagulls mm-hmm. and i walked up got the key in the lock and started turning the padlock mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden this face appeared from underneath one of the um ac units on the roof right and he just went, <laughs> for, oh shit, you've never seen me open a lock that quick in my entire life and jump into this room as he sped towards me, flying and shitting everywhere. Oh, gold. And so I thought, okay, fine, I'm in here now. Mm. At some point, I need to get out, don't I? So I did. Are you well, actually, are you, are you there now? Is this it? Did, are you <laughs> yes, I'm still here. from that room? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yep it, it nearly got to that stage yes um and so uh, about 20 minutes later i needed to remove myself from that room and i thought okay mm. I had, and the door has uh slatted uh, it's got slots in it so it mm. has ventilation coming in so i can see out as well mm. and i was looking around and i could hear them on the roof mm. but they, all, they went all quiet and there's a little lip on the roof that goes over the door mm. so i thought if I could just sneak myself out mm. and lock the door, then I could disappear and then don't have to attack me again. Mm. And so I opened the door. I, I got my big rucksack full of tools on. Yep. And I, I jumped down. And as I land on the on the roof, mm. makes a thud. And about 20 eyes just 
popped up, looked at me, and went, Wah! I thought, oh, oh, God. So they just it launched themselves into the sky, flew around, started shitting everywhere, and dive bombing me. And I was like, you sons of bitches. So I jumped back in the room, didn't I? Mm. Couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, right, let it calm down for another 10 minutes. <laughs> nice. And then this happened, I think, once more. And so, mm. yeah, I, I spent about 20 minutes trying to get out of this bloody room. <laughs> on the second attempt, I took my rucksack off. I opened the door slowly, couldn't hear anything, popped it down very slowly so that wouldn't make any jingly, jangly noises as I jumped out. Mm -hmm. And I crept out of the room. Mm -hmm. I closed the door behind me, put the latch over, put the lock through the latch, mm -hmm. started turning the key. And the maintenance man came round the corner and went, Hello there, you all right? <laughs> and I thought, fucking, it scared the shit out of me. Mm. He, he's one of these guys, oh, don't worry about them. And they are dive bombing us, shitting mm. everywhere, mm. trying to crap all over us. Mm. And he's gone, you, you go first. So I went, vroom, gone, mm. straight away. I didn't get crapped on, thank goodness. But it's a frightening experience. <laughs> you, you and Rob, Robert Patterson, see? <laughs> yes. Don't don't kill the seagulls. It's bad. It's bad yeah, luck. bad juju, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um... Hold on. Ah! <laughs> can I can I just ask? Is the um, you know, the last time you saw the uh, the maintenance guy, did he look like he was doing a good impression of uh, Han Solo in Carbonite, <laughs> 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 just frozen in bird <laughs> shit? Yeah. I I think he was taken up into the sky by a pterodactyl and, and chomped on. <laughs> And tossed between two of them and thrown up and split in half. And then that was it. He was disappeared. That was the last we ever saw. We found his body, but it looked like the Jabberwocky had been at it. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, so when, so when's your next maintenance turn up there? I mean, I ain't going up there till about September, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not going up there yet. It's nice. bloody horrible. Nice. You should. Uh, I don't know. You should. You should go up there. You should go up there and film them. Film them attacking you. I did last time because you know that that's good footage. It didn't yeah. look as as impressive on camera as it did when you're staring down the barrel of a, a a seagull which has trained its eyes on you, and the pure silhouette is very thin wings because he's heading directly towards you. He's dive bombing you out of the sun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where is he? He's in the sun. No. Oh God, it's Top Gun Maverick all again. He's coming out of the sun at me. <laughs> car, car. <laughs> yeah, these these wings look like razor blades just bent over. They're so thin and just aimed towards me You're like, you son of a bitch. Wow. So I, I, I've got to be honest. I think you sound a bit of a wuss. It's just a bird. These are big birds. They're yeah. huge. I've seen big bird. He's he's yellow, and he teaches me how to spell. These these were not telling me how to spell, <laughs> unless the words were fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> it was more like they were channeling their Oscar Grouch instead of Big Bird. Oh, well, that that's different, I guess. Well, okay. <laughs> hmm. So, 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 he, he, next time, what you need to do is you need to go up there with like a a bag of chips and just like throw them. That's a good idea. Just throw them in there. Yeah. And then have, have they'll have them. They'll have them out. And then while they're all fighting over the chips, you can just get on with it. I could do that. Yeah. I I know what'll happen mm. though. Some I'll end up painted into a corner somehow, won't I? Quite literally with poo. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like a slug with salt all around him going, fuck, where the fuck do I go now? <laughs> you look you look like the Ghostbusters at the end of the film when after the marshmallow man's exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Just come out like Ernie Hudson. I love this town. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You all right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you? I'm fine. Go check on the little guy. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so this time next year, just set your calendars. I'll probably mm. be up there again and covered in crap. Nice. Midsummer's Day. 
Kind of look, yeah. look, oh, look forward to it. Oh, it's midsummer. Yes, today is Midsummer's Day. Yeah, well, it's Midsummer. See, well. Pla- planning synergy. Oh. We don't just throw this podcast together. Oh, no. Despite appearances, to to the contrary, we there don't. Was, <laughs> there was a lot of thought that went into that. Yeah, I think along the lines of, <laughs> along the lines of, oh, it's Midsummer next week. Yep. <laughs> so, are you going to get sewn into a seagull next time? Is that what's going to happen? Do you think? No. Oh, so much, I... so much for the uh, spoiler warnings. I think. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think I, no, hmm? I'm not spoiling anything apart from Elton's next trip. Well, my my next film will be Tusk. Oh fuck off! You run. You can watch Tusk. I can. I'll record the podcast. I'm not watching Tusk again. <laughs> there is no fucking way I'm watching that piece of that shit. Was, that was good. No, it wasn't. It was demonstrably not good. It was the everything the opposite of good. If you looked up not good or <laughs> antithesis of good in the dictionary, it would just have the word tusk, brackets, Kevin Smith. I get an impression you were not too impressed. No, I was not impressed. <laughs> I wasted my fucking two hours of my life, my precious life. I was gonna be, I'm going to be lying on my bed, deathbed one day and thinking thinking oh i've only got like two hours left i could have had four hours left but i watched fucking tusk yep that's true jesus christ pile of shit that was well it, it's not on any streaming services I, I know it's safe. i know because even even the streaming service like netflix which welcomed armageddon into its fold wouldn't God, take fucking Lord. tusk <laughs> <laughs> that, that tells you all you need to know. Fuck oh, Tusk. You know. Fuck Tusk right in the ear. Yeah, fuck Tusk with its Tusk. With its Tusk. Have you seen it, Darren? Um, no, but I've I've heard a lot about it. Ah, oh, okay. You'll hear a whole yeah. lot more if you put it on the fucking docket, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. anyway okay, that was then. my week. And that was your... <laughs> That was your week. Thank you, Elton. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Well, in which case, we'll move on to you, Mr. B. How was your week? Uh, it was all right. Um, this weekend, I did mm. go to a family get-together. Uh-huh. Yes, I did. Um, it was good to see everyone there. My son came down, but, you know, my granddaughter, who now does angry faces on to order. Mm-hmm. You tell her, do the face, and she does this rather comical sort of gurn. Mm-hmm. at you which nobody ever got tired of making her do that face that was that was funny <laughs> nice there you go look at that I'm, you're not even I'm one year old runs in the family yeah it does yep. it does i have got a rather nicely timed picture of her making that face and giving side eye to her mum as well <laughs> it's just it's like i'm using that as my i am displeased with you photograph for every post on facebook that i don't like Nice. That's it. It's just going to be that face. You know, like it was with uh, your daughter when she made the uh, the angry biscuit face. Oh, the angry cupcake face. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, I said angry cupcake face. Yeah. Do not it's... take the cupcake from Lisa at age cupcakes. two. No. Exactly. Mm. So there we go. So got a train now, so that's great. That's good. Um, yeah, we were going to do a barbecue, but um, because the weather couldn't make up its mind whether it was going to be good or not, mm. I had to cook the food beforehand. And no, I didn't poison anybody. So, um, well, you know. You can't when you're using an oven. Well, you'd, say, you'd think that, wouldn't you? Some people, well. with, with in the wrong hands, those things could be lethal weapons. And I did cook chicken as well. So, yeah. you know, playing with fire there, folks. <laughs> <sighs> but there yes. you go. So, yeah. So, um, that, was a, that was a good day. Very, very good day. Nice to see everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on Sunday, went for a Father's Day lunch which is very good, at Smith & Weston's. Very classy joint. Um, really? Uh, uh, it's yeah. Not selling your guns, then? No, it's not selling me guns. No, I, I got to uh, I got to tick something off of the uh, off the old bucket list as well. I sat on a seat that was made out of a, a horsey saddle. Um, and, and that's uh, your yeah. bucket list, is it? That's my bucket list. That's, uh, that's it, done. I'm complete now. So. <laughs> you, you literally had on your bucket list, I Take want me to Jesus. sit... I want... <laughs> I want to sit on a saddle. I want to sit on a horse's sa- on a saddle, but not one on the back of a horse. Oh no! I want one that's been made into a bar stool. That's what I want. And yes, indeed, I did done 
live the dream. And the, the, just, just, just bringing this up, but this is the man who hates chips being served on a shovel and a and a you know burger on a skillet and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, but, but you, sitting this, on a bar stool that's made from a a horse's saddle is fine. Now you see, now that's the thing, right? Those places can't make up their minds what they want to be. Okay, it's like somebody stood in front of the old knickknack shotgun and said, "Fire at point blank range at this room because I'm not quite sure what's cool, and maybe somebody will think we're cool if they spot a, a piece of memorabilia that they really love, and they will think, oh, this is so retro, I love it.' It's not like that at all. This right. one wears its heart on its sleeve and go, "No, we're going cowboys and and horses and stuff," <laughs> and it does it. Doesn't quite. You know, it kind of spoils the actual image when you've got someone with like a, you know, a, a, a Surrey accent um, mm. comes up and asks you what you want for dinner, you mm. know, or your lunch. So it kind of takes away a bit from the uh, experience. But uh, all in all, mm-hmm. yeah, very good. Some really, really nice food in there. Mm. So uh, there you go. So um, rock on. Right. And all that. And mm-hmm. to finish off the Father's Day, we went out to see mm. Lightyear. Oh, yes. Yes, the Buzz, or should I say, yeah, the Buzz Lightyear movie. Now, I, I, there is a lot of people losing their shit over this film at mm-hmm. the moment because they're feeling sorry for Tim Allen or something because apparently he needs a few bob, um, right. you know, because, uh, yeah, apparently he's, living, he's destitute somewhere, you know, and he mm. should have been in doing the voice. Of right. Buzz Lightyear. Right. But uh yeah, it kind of it kind of, you know, says at the beginning that this is the film based that the toy was based on. Hmm. And uh, you know, if you've ever bought any kind of toy that's got a voice of, say, like, I don't know, Iron Man or something like that, nine times out of ten, it's not gonna be Robert Downey Jr. doing the voice for that Iron Man. Right? It's hmm. gonna be someone doing a very bad impression of hmm. Robert Downey Jr. And yeah. So that's the little joke with this. That's why they've got a different person doing the voice. Right. So it's that little little joke. But anyway, um, the film mm. itself, yeah, very much enjoyed it. Uh, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, but I will say two things. One, mm. the one thing I thought that was going to be really annoying mm. actually turned out to be one of the best things in the film, and that's the robot cat called Socks. Right. Right. That thing steals the show. Mm-hmm. Very, very good. And the one thing I thought was going to be really cool um, has proved to me that I've, I think I've reached, mm. I've just about reached my limit with this person. Go now. on. And that's Taika Waititi. All I right. Think, I think I've gone, I'm Taika'd out now. <laughs> plum um, Taika'd. Yeah, Plum Taika'd. Um, right. uh, he seems to be around a lot now. Right. And it's his voice right. seems to appear in just about everything or whatever. Yeah. And I don't want to dislike him because I really like the stuff that he does. You know, mm. and he's a funny bloke. But, but too much know. though. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's a bit much. And uh, I mean, mm. I'm going to go and see the new Thor movie when it comes out. I'm going to go and watch that, even right. though I've got reservations about that. Um, uh, you know, I've read. I've read the actual main source material for that film. Mm. And um, I've got to say, it's uh, what I've seen of the trailer. It's like taking the story of Jack the Ripper and making it into a fun musical. It's like, no, God Butcher's not a fun story. (laughs) Not at all. Mm. And you've given it to a comedy director. So, uh, eh, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll reserve judgment. Save it. Save it. Mm. We'll we'll see how it goes. But um, I'm really... Every time I see the trailer for it, it's like, mm. oh, you're playing this for laughs. Oh. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a throwaway villain, isn't he? That's mm-hmm. what it's going to be. Yeah, he's going to be like a Boba Fett. He's going to be in there for two seconds. You're going to deal with him. No, and I don't know. It. I don't think so. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see, see, see how it goes. I'm hoping I'm going to be proved wrong. Mm. Right. I'm hoping that my fears are going to be unfounded. Mm-hmm. And that. But, um, yeah. But anyway, Lightyear itself, yeah, great movie, beautiful to look at, um, and very mm. funny. So a mm. uh, bit of a good laugh if you you know want a bit of a giggle, go see Lightyear. Right. Uh, it does have three post-credit sequences, but um, really, oh, I wouldn't if you if you got somewhere to be, oh, I wouldn't bother hanging around from. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair enough. 
So there we go. That's okay. That. That's oh, is that it? That's the whole. That's, that's your that's whole it. week. That, that's my whole week. Yes. Oh right. Okay. Fair so, enough. So a little bit toned down this week from all the other okay. stuff that I've been doing all the other weeks. That's fine. That's fine. There we go. Okay. All yeah, right. Okay. Um. Well, my week. Um. The usual. Um. I laughed my ass off at Obi Wan Kenobi. Um. We'll just take that as red now. I, I, I'm yeah. just watching. I'm just watching it purely for humor value now. Mm. There is this this week's thing with stormtroopers down a corridor where they're literally like a foot away from each other. It's just unbelievably. It was hilarious. A whole the whole film, the whole episode was just hilarity because nobody could shoot it properly. Um, much like the stormtroopers. Um, <laughs> anyway, the other thing, um, I got new glasses. Which was great because I was able to see with the new glasses the three hundred pound bill for the fucking glasses. Excellent. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So I was well pleased with that. Oh fuck! That reminds me. I've got a, I've got a, a, a my yearly appointment coming up for mine as well. Mm. So, yeah. Ooh. So so I can actually see again, which is great. But obviously, I'm now. I ne- what I can now see is my ATM showing red numbers at me. Um. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is, I went. The main thing was uh, this weekend. I went to the um, Lowestoft First Light Festival, the Festival of Light. Um, which, funny enough, three years ago, I went to straight after um, Jim's wedding, which oh, is where yeah, I went to did, last time. Yeah. So, so it was kind of like interesting because it's like I'm I'm now setting my festival going <laughs> based around Jim's anniversary. Um, but anyway, so went to this thing, and it you know last week was blazing hot, wasn't it? Oh yeah. And it's like you know it's supposed to be about the equinox, you know it's supposed to be like uh, just to stay up all night, you know just party, watch the sun go down, watch the people walk past, you know go to there's like there's like stages of music up and down, there's like poetry readings, there's comedy, there's live music, and um. Yeah, and, and and I got there, and I put the tent up, and um, within 10 seconds, it, it started raining. So that was good. That was a great start for the Festival of Light, as everything <laughs> went dark. Um, Festival of Light rain. Yeah. Yes, but there then, we are. But one thing, and this may be something that festival goers... Um, experience more than I have because I'm a complete noob when it comes to like big festivals and things. Mm-hmm. But we set up a tent, and we set up a tent in this. There's like an area which is for for what they call wild camping because you're on the beach, and so there's only a limited amount of space. Anyway, so we put this tent up, and Carol's like sitting there, and she's got this thing. She's got this view out to the sea, and you know, okay, it's a bit stormy and a bit <laughs> windy and a bit. Oh my god, we're going to get blown out to sea and we are going to die. Um but then what happened was along came you know, everyone was fine, and then along came this tent with with like three student girls and one guy. And they sort of rocked up right beside us. And it's like, okay, fine, you know, you're gonna get that sort of thing at a festival, you know, we're the old farts, they're they're gonna be partying until three in the fucking morning, it don't really matter. Yeah, and then what happened was, um, you were right there with your mic. <laughs> yeah, sorry, mic. It's, it, it's slowly, it's slowly dropping. So I'm trying to <laughs> tighten happens, the actual. Happens to the best of us at this age, I'm, mate. I'm, I'm try, um, trying to tighten me nuts. Yeah. So, um, but so we're si- <laughs> so we're sitting there, and I, I've 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 kind of like laid out laid out in the tent. And I'm just kind of like I've, I'm sort of dozing off. And then all of a sudden, Carol goes, look at this. And this this bunch have put two tents up. And behind the two tents, which is directly in our line of view. Now, bearing in mind that as more and more tents have come out, come about, with the, the view of the sea went from like 180 degrees, you know, sort of from side to side, from left to right. And mm, it yeah. slowly narrowed down to like about sort of a 12 degree slice right in front of us. Mm. That 12 degree slice now no longer has any beach visible. The reason why is because there is a bucket with a toilet seat on it. What? Right outside our front fucking door. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then what happens is Carol's sitting there. She's got like a, a beach seat thing. You know, one of these foldable collapsible seats that we brought with us. And she's yeah. sitting out there and like literally about two foot from her feet is this bucket with a fucking toilet seat on it. And Carol's sitting there and a lady comes out of the <laughs> out of the tent. Yeah. It takes pulls a shit. A, yep, pulls her drawers and takes a dump. Right in oh, front of Carol. No. You are fucking joking. No, absolutely not joking. And so Carol's like, really? Like, literally, she's like, really? And the lady's like, but I don't like going in the public toilets. <laughs> you couldn't I, get more public. Um, you, you're literally in an open sand dune with tents on every conceivable side. And you're literally taking a shit two foot away from a complete stranger's feet. And she she did. She sat there and she had a good old dump. And she pulled the <laughs> lid down. Gave it a shake because it's a chemical toilet apparently. So don't worry. We don't have to worry about the smell. And Carol's like, the you, fuck is the point of that? Just take the fucking thing and put it away somewhere. Yeah. And Carol's like, you've got two tents. Can't you put it between the two tents? Because like, you know, then then nobody can see it. You know, it's actually stuck between two tents. And she's like, and the lady goes, no, 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 I don't, no, I can't put it there because that's where we're sleeping. Fuck yeah! Go hell. fuck yourself, woman. Go yeah. fuck yourself. So anyway, they they go off, and Carol immediately gets up, and goes right, picks picks the toilet up. I mean, I fucking wouldn't have touched it, but picks the toilet up, walks between the two tents, dump, plocks it down. Right? Yeah. We're sitting there. We're just about to get ready to go. Mm-hmm. They come back. Another one of the girls comes along. She's literally walking with her pants around her ankles across the beach, going, where's the fucking toilet? The toilet's gone. And she sees the toilet, pulls the toilet out, puts it back in front of our tent, lifts it up, and then doomf, drops a deuce. Oh, God. I'd steal the toilet and go and put it somewhere else. Well, I mean, what happened was then Carol's just sat like, right, you know what? I'm not moving for a second, lady. Just, just wait there. And she sits there and she locks eyes with this lady having a shit. <laughs> and this lady's looking at her going, shouting to her mates, this lady's harassing me. She's oh, harassing God. me. You're harassing me. And Carol's like, I'm not harassing you. I'm looking at the sea. You just happen to be in the way. You've w- moved w- into my line of sight. Was it like yeah. a dog doing a shit? Because... They a shiver. dog will glance, yeah, a glance at you, yeah. and it's like, "What, what are you looking at me for?" Oh, yeah. I'm waiting to pick it up, mate. Honestly, yeah. yeah. You know what? You know what Carol should have done mm. while she was standing there, sort of like staring at this woman's eyes. She should have had like a bottle of water to hand, took a took a mouthful of it, and just let it slowly drop out of the corner of her mouth, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, and make a noise, make a low. Uh, well. Well, finally, what made them move it? I tell you what, finally made them move it was they didn't realise I was in the tent. Oh, right. So Carol gets out, right, and right. she's gone off to go to the actual portaloos. Yeah. Okay. Which, in fairness to the festival, they kept them clean, and they had a van that came along and literally picked up a dirty one and then put a new one in its place, like almost constantly. So they were completely fresh, and there was nothing wrong with them at all. Fantastic. It was well really that, well so. done, that, 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 that golf festival. Club. Golf, golf club. club. So there wasn't even that excuse. Anyway, so Carol goes off. And as she goes off, I come out, sit down, and there's the toilet sitting in front of me. But now a girl comes out of one of those tents, and there's a bloke sitting there. And the thing yeah. was, I'm sitting there, and in my hand, I have my phone. Right. And I'm not. I'm not filming. I promise you that I wasn't fucking filming. But what I was doing was I was looking on Honest Facebook. Stuff. You were streaming. Weren't no, you? Yeah, I was. No, she was streaming. She was, no, yeah. yeah, I bet she was. I, I put no. I put. I was looking at Facebook. But the thing was, I had me. I had me sunglasses on, so yeah. you couldn't see me eyes. I had me phone right there. Yeah. And I, I'm just sitting there on the sofa. I was sitting there on the chair. So she comes along. As soon as she sees me, oh, a miraculously. They suddenly want to move the ch- the move the toilet. Yeah, I bet. And they make a big song and dance of it. They pick it up, and they pick it up, 
I will move this toilet so that nobody get nobody super sensitive gets offended. I don't give a shit what you want to say, love. Just move your fucking shitter. Yeah. So yeah, the true festival experience. Love it. That's just what you need, isn't it? Flip it out. You did the job without even doing a thing. You yep. just you turned up and that was enough. That was enough. Three girls did not want to take a shit in front of a man holding a phone with dark glasses on. No. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Who would guess it? Who would guess such a thing? So uh so yeah, so that was that was basically it. I mean and and then then what happened was we went we went round and we saw a couple of poetry readings, but there was one which was very good. Um yeah. I can't remember the guy's name, but I'll look it up and put it in the notes later. And there was, you know, there was some comedy. Mark Thomas was there doing a bit of comedy. Oh, was uh, he? Yeah, he was there. Excellent. Um there was there was loads of stuff going on. And the the only thing I would say is, and I apologise to anyone who's listening from Lowestoft, but Lowestoft is a bit of a shithole. Um, <laughs> because once you get past the festival and out into mm-hmm. the actual main street, because we went to go and get like a go to a Chinese restaurant, there was like a restaurant nearby. As soon as yeah. you get out there, the the um, shall we say, the amount of shops that were shuttered or um had sort of like wanted clean clean was it clean plastic bags that was the one i was noticed all the shops wanted clean plastic bags i was just like what the fuck is going on here like oh you know why didn't you it's because you've got a load of those people taking a shit in their bags Mm. that's what it is yeah it was very weird but the thing was it was it was a bit it was a bit run down and some of the people there clearly decided that drink was the only only option and I'm, there's no judgment but it's just like you know when you go from like bright lights of festival to suddenly like oh we've clearly yeah. walked into the dark side of of gotham city you know it's just like suddenly Indeed. you went oh hang on um but the chinese was nice the chinese was good so we went to that and then um and then i came back and as i came back like that the heavens opened and we had a thunderstorm of biblical proportions at mm-hmm. one point on the radar, because yeah. I had a little um, GPS radar thing, apparently along the coast, along that four-mile stretch of coast, we had 41 lightning strikes in a minute. Fuck. It literally, at midnight, it was pure daylight for about 10 minutes. Brilliant. Well, it was no, the best of the light, wasn't it? Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. There was no darkness. It was literally everything was covered in this kind of pale blue light. And all you could hear was this. <laughs> sort of like, like Donald Duck being thrown into a chipper. It was just like. <laughs> all the way. And um, yeah, so I didn't actually get to sleep. Until that must about have been awesome. Oh, it though. was fucking awesome. When you can just stick your phone straight out of the tent and you just go take a photograph and there's just like the sky's just lit up. It's just like, right, okay. Uh, there was no sort of like, oh, time it so you can get some lightning strikes. It was just like, no, everything's just going off. Um, well, uh, it's a good uh, job you were uh, you were near the chemical toilets in case you got a bit frightened, eh? Yeah, yeah, well, it's okay. That, that would have caught fire. I was looking forward to that. Yeah, but um, yeah, but anyway, so um, yeah, and then eventually ended up. What happened is uh, Carol ended up going to the security guard who was running the um, running the uh, site, and him and his mate went and just took care of took care of the chemical toilet. Let's just put it that way. Did that? Um, yes, but um, yeah. So yeah, so we just so we had a festival light, which basically resulted in us hiding in a tent. Not being able to sleep because it was so loud from the rain and the thunder until three o'clock in the fucking morning. I'm like just lying there going, "Oh great!" I mean, it was spectacular, but yeah, it was also a bit like any second now there's going to be a fucking tidal wave straight out of the beach and we're going to have trouble. It felt like that. It felt end of the world ish. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Um, other than that, yeah, as I said, I got that Capcom arcade stuff. Paid sixteen quid to play each game once for like fifteen <laughs> seconds. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, don't buy that. Don't do that, guys. Just, just Ooh, don't. That mm. reminds me, mm. I did actually buy an um, an Atari. Um, you know the old Atari consoles. Oh yeah, the twenty six hundreds. Yeah, they were they were selling the like a whole bundle of those mm. type yeah. of games. 
on the Xbox store. So I bought mm. them. And it's just one of these games that I've actually spent more than five minutes playing. Mm. And it's it's literally a, 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 a very sort of proto RPG mm. that they had on there. They actually did have save points and stuff like this. So, um, mm. yeah, out of the 50 or 60 games it had with it. And what was it called? One. What was it called? I can't remember. You know, well, that's that, fucking the useless, life isn't of it? Me. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for that useful interlude. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, I played I, a I've game. Got it, here. it was really Hold good. On. What's I've it called? Got it Don't know. I've got it here. It's mm. uh, do, 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 do. Is it mm. on my... Oh, it is on the Xbox. Yeah, fuck it. It is. Mm. Oh, I'm going to have to start the Xbox app if I want to see No, that, no, no. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let let everyone know in the Facebook group. I will. There you go. Because I'm sure there will be at least one person who wants to know. I don't know oh, who that person sure would be, but it, they're, they're there. They're out there. Definitely well, out there. It's definitely an Atari emulator. That's definitely an Atari emulator. Well done. Yeah. And there Nemesis is on there. You know, <laughs> the, the thing, that. That's it. Oh, two games. I actually spent more than five minutes playing. Well, there, there you go. go. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> neither of which you can remember the name. No. Nope. <laughs> Brilliant. Well done. Um, right. Okay. Well, um, I looked at the feedback to see if there was any feedback for Calvary. And mm. um, apart from people saying that um, The Guard was another film to look up, uh, which I, I mentioned in the cast, uh, mm. the only other thing that came back was David Renane, how man Happy Dave over in uh, New Zealand who wanted to ask the question, so do we need to start an invite-only Facebook page for the best slash worsts of Lee's dad joke stockpile? I feel like we're missing out on some terrific slash cringeworthy resource. Because last week I mentioned that I was getting inundated with um, with dad jokes. Yeah. Yes. And funny enough, even as I was speaking right now, I've got one from Chris Johnson. So, um, yeah, I shall read this one out. Yeah, I shall actually do it now. Please do. To the person who stole my copy of Microsoft Office, we I will find you. You have my word. Oh. There you go. You see, I started on a gag. I ended on a gag. And now we shall be all joyed and buoyed up for oh. this week's movie. <laughs> so after listening to that, I know he doesn't excel at comedy. <laughs> Yeah, he hasn't got much access oh. to comedy. <laughs> PowerPoint. I don't know. Yeah. I can't make it work. <laughs> MS Paint. <laughs> um. Anyway, so yeah, if anybody does have any jokes or any feedback for any episode whatsoever, please, of course, send them in to the uh, usual channels, which is email, which is feedback at blacktoppodcast.com, or on the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Talk Podcast, or finally hit me up on Twitter, which is at Black Talk Podcast. Right, so let's move on. Let's move on to this week's movie. It's... It's a movie. It definitely is. And um, it's going to be um, a cheerful affair, I suspect. So let's all just roll the jingle for this week's movie, which is Midsummer. <laughs> Right, so Midsommar is a 2019 folk horror film written by and directed by Ari Aster, who had previously done um, Hereditary. Has anyone else seen? Anyone else here seen Hereditary? Before we go any further, um, no. Right, no, okay. I haven't. No, fine, that's cool. It's just just good to know because if I make any comparisons, I want to know that I'm not spoiling it for you. Uh, the film follows a dysfunctional cu- couple, Danny and Christian, played by Fro- Florence Pugh and Jack Rayner, as they, or, or as I call him, bargain basement Chris Pratt, 
um, as they travelled to Sweden with a group of friends for a midsummer festival, only to find themselves in the clutches of a sinister Scandinavian pagan cult. Supporting supporting actors include William Jackson Harper, who I believe is in the Happy Place, isn't he? He is. The TV yeah. series yeah. Happy Place. Uh, Wilhelm Blogrem, uh, Elora Torture, Archie McCordy, and Will Porter. Um, who you may have seen in things like, um, what was it, Bandersnatch. Yes. Um, mm, yeah, Black yeah. Mirror Bandersnatch. He was also in a few other things. Um, Detroit and stuff like that. Um, anyway, um, the film was produced uh, between the United States and Sweden and was initially pitched as a straightforward slasher film set amongst Swedish cultists. Um, the film was actually shot on location in Budapest, surprisingly enough. Mm. And it had a budget of nine million dollars. How much mm. did it make at the cinema, Elton? Oh, nine million! Is that it? And that's how much it cost. Yeah, that's I incredible. Th- I think eight million of that was for catching the bear. <laughs> three tamers, <laughs> three tamers, <laughs> and <laughs> three tamers, and a and a guy who can stitch it. Yep, go on. It, uh, nine million. How quid. much do I reckon? Oh, I. I reckon about 70, 70 million. Oh, going sensible. Right, okay. And Darren? Um, I think it made around 50 million pies of um, indeterminate um, <laughs> Podly, uh, filling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 50 million hairy pies. Hair pies. I have to say, I did, st- I did have trouble not laughing at that. Oh, you're eating hair pie. Hold on. <laughs> you are. Harry, Harry, you need to come over here in the 1980s. Hair pie meant something entirely. Well, actually, no, it didn't mean something entirely. No, it meant exactly <laughs> the same. Anyway, um, yes, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, spoilers here on in. If you haven't seen Midsommar, go and watch it. Um, regardless of what we say going forward, it's worth a watch. Um, if only to just have an opinion on it. Um, but spoiler, 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 spoilers. Um, yeah, it made forty-eight million dollars. Oh, okay. So you weren't far off, Dal, except for the pies bit. So, <laughs> and there you go. So, Elton, this was your pick. You have seen it before, yeah? I have, yes. Right. Okay. Yes. So we'll do the round table bit before the big discussion. So it'll go Darren, me, and then you. And um, Darren, what did you think of it? Uh, well, I think this week's podcast will be sponsored mm. by the phrase "fucking hell, Elton." <laughs> um, yeah, because mm. that's what I kept thinking last night as I was watching it. Fucking hell, Elton! <laughs> I tell you, I think I got triggered more times than Roy Rogers' six shooter. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah particularly, I. Uh, mm, you see, cause the cheerful is, opening, the anti-up no, opening. <laughs> no, well, no, it was. Um, there's, there's a a certain. Uh, let's see, inf- there's something that um, Florence Pugh does uh, to, when she's calming down. Um, that just I suddenly thought of of re, right, mm. and so throughout this entire film, I'm now linking. I'm thinking. What would me and what would we do if we're caught in this situation? And I, I kept planning escape routes as I'm watching the film. <laughs> right? I'm not joking because uh, I've been in a situation where before where I thought uh, I thought I was actually in quite a lot of danger, and this <laughs> triggered me back. That triggered me back to that. Right? Wow. I was getting really anxious watching this because. I'm planning escape routes as I'm watching this film, <laughs> right? And I'm mm. thinking, it's like me. I'm looking at the the boyfriend in this. Mm. I'm thinking, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Mm. And I'm, I'm I'm like, all I can see is re in, in in Florence's situation. I'm thinking, oh shit, oh shit. I'm really quite. I was really quite getting worked up about the whole <laughs> thing. Watching was the show. she watching it, it with you as well? No, no. She was in. She was in the other room. Right. And it's it's like. You know, that, just that alone, this whole overbearing sense of anxiety and danger just comes across in this. There's just nothing, nothing is relaxing in this film. 
right? There's there's just from the word go, it just says this is a bit of a wrong one when they get there. <laughs> you know? I'm looking this at the clock. Wrong one. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the clock, they've got there, and it's like there's all these people dressed in robes, and it's like there's around about two and a half hours to go of this film. Well, <laughs> two hours ten minutes. <laughs> It ain't two hours, ten minutes of them dancing around a fucking maypole. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> it's probably somebody being made out of, to, to, you know, into a maypole, but it definitely ain't a happy clappy. Okay. Right. So, and, um, unless you're talking 12 pound coal hammer, <laughs> 12 pound coal hammer to one's extremities. <laughs> Then, Find um, that first step is a doozy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it, you are left in no uncertain terms. It, the you know when you know it's like quite obvious. It, you're not thinking, oh, what are they going to do with that big hammer? You know, it, <laughs> <laughs> you know what's coming up, right? And it makes it even worse, right? okay. especially with the abrupt way that they do one bit with that, right? The, the swinging action and how it comes abruptly <laughs> to an end. <laughs> It's just like that's leaving more than a mark. That isn't it. That's, that's not. That's, that's that's not. That's not just bruises. That is, but no, that is bruises. But it's bruises of the person's ancestor. You know, that's it. They felt. They're like they're suddenly sitting there. Go. Oh, what was that? Wow. Oh, I've got achy face. Why is that? Yeah. Wow. Um, it's not walking over the grave, is it? It's like fucking. Oh, my face hurts. Engaged. He's not. He's not walking it off. Let's put it that way. Yeah. In more is. ways than one. Yep. Yep. Um, mm. Yeah. The film's full of of, of like, it's just the fact that the friends also, they're none of them, mm. just you know seem like decent people. They just mm. are going there, especially her boyfriend. Oh, um, don't even get me started on that cunt. But mm. you know, um, yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, we'll we'll get on to the rest of it. Oh, we will. Oh, yeah. So much, so much. I need to. I need to. I need to vent. I need to get it out of there. This yeah. is therapy. I'll yeah. This. I mean, for me, um, uh, for me, I've seen Hereditary, and I, <laughs> I didn't like that film. I thought I thought it had a film. I thought it was two halves. There was no. a half that was like interesting and clever and it's a character study on grief and all that sort of stuff and then it hits it hits 30 minutes left to go and then just goes bonzo dog doodah band mental and just you just sit there going oh oh you you you've given up on being subtle then and funny enough midsommar does exactly the bloody same and you know you kind of like there's build up a dread there's build up of you know, characters, there's build up a situation and all that sort of stuff. And in the last like twenty minutes it just goes blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, oh all right then. Um and so on one hand, I liked it for the, the filmmaking. I thought it was all shot beautifully. Um and the soundtrack even though parts of the soundtrack annoyed the fuck out of me. If I hear one more thing telling me that I've got to be scared because there's nothing going on and the music is going, and then suddenly the music just goes, just turns off. It's just like, no, that's not scary. That's just fucking infuriating. So, yeah, it was a mixed bag for me. I, I I can't say I didn't like it. I can't say it was a horrible film or a crap film and you shouldn't watch it. I can't go off on the rails on it. Not like I did with Hereditary. I, I fucking hated that by the end of the film. But this, I just sort of sat there just going, hmm, and I just kind of kept shrugging my shoulders. Um, the Alan Partridge shrug, look around, shrug, look around gif. Yeah, it, yeah. I... I I loved I loved how it was shot. I loved how it was filmed. I love the characters and the, the the there's lots to discuss. I think there's lots to discuss about it. You can you can deep dive into this quite a lot. But oh, it's was, made for that, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But was I scared? No. Was I disturbed? Not really. Was I was I shocked? No. What I did feel was vaguely amused because some of the splots and the splats and the things like that felt very Monty Python 
the bit the bit when the guy the bit when the lady falls off the off the thing the skydiving sky, lady the skydiving lady and she falls and you're supposed to be like all shocked and she literally hits the ground in the same way as like a Monty Python prop, you know, when they like fire, when they <laughs> fire a cow over the over the fence of the um, castle, and they go incoming, and it just goes, <laughs> or when they when they make a Trojan rabbit, and <laughs> they send the Trojan rabbit in, and it gets catapulted over, and it just lands and just crumples from a very long shot, and it and the, every single bit of violence felt like that. I just kept feeling like I just watched like some really dark episode of Inside Number Nine or um you know, or Monty Python Holy Grail. It was just very like sort of And I just was like <laughs> I had to pause it for five minutes. It was only when old man Smithers with his knees pointing up his nose, suddenly I was like, Ooh, I think he, I think that's gonna I think that's gonna smart a bit. <laughs> but but then when they hit him, <laughs> then when they hit him with the hammer, he <laughs> just felt like he just felt like uh, Matthias being stoned at the in fucking Life of Brian. He's like, "Oh, lay off! I haven't started yet." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> "Dump!" Oh, <laughs> so yeah. So I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a sort of weird disconnect with it. I didn't feel threatened or frightened or disturbed or any of that stuff. I just felt. But then I'm not I'm not really bothered by folk horror so maybe that's i'm coming at it from the wrong perspective but mm. like i say would i say don't watch it no no i wouldn't do that what i would say is just some people like you doubt are going to come into it going oh that that's just disturbed me up the wazoo yeah and other people are going to be like me going it's pretty <clears throat> stuff happens <laughs> the end um and that's that so yeah, but anyway, we'll get down to discussing more about it. It's a good pub. It's definitely a good pub discussion. Um, Phil. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. What about you, Danelle? And you've obviously watched it a second time. So go on, him. Yeah, I love it even more now. The first time, I wasn't paying as much attention to it as I was this time round. Mm-hmm. And th- this film has got everything I require in a film. Mm-hmm. I like when a film kind of spoils itself at the very beginning with the the tapestry that you have. Mm. And you look at it and you're like, I know I should be absorbing this and taking this in. And when you watch it a second time, then you're like, okay, right, pause. I remember this. Let's Mm. look through this. Really take this in, see what I can see and see where we are going and what I remember. Mm. And... I like I, I like a film that throws stuff into the background where mm. you see pictures and paintings and like Christian being in that white room and noticing the bears on fire on the wallpaper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just staring there, isn't he? He, mm. he can't move anyway. He, he's drugged mm. up to the wazoo anyway, mm. but he's just staring there, just looking at it going, Oh, mm. bear. Mm. Fire. Fire. It's a bear. bear. On fire. Fire bear. <laughs> and then the lady comes in. Yeah. <laughs> but I it has got everything because it it has them little things like there's I, I've watched a couple of YouTube videos on it as well. Once I'd seen it through a couple of times, I'm like, right, I need to know what is going on here. I I've seen the story, I can work it all out, but I know that there's little things that they are going to drop into a film like this that you are going to catch on the third and fourth watch, and I want to catch them this time. And I think when in one of the apartments there's a picture of the uh, the Scarecrow from Wizard of Oz in there and mm. little things like that that really just, oh, I love that uh, mm. attention to, it's not even detail, it's it's um, it, it's the Easter eggs. I wouldn't say it's attention to detail because that, that's that's kind of mm. you're looking for it. Once you see it, there it is, and mm. the, the big mural of the bear and stuff like that, and the way they do the trippy stuff where you can see the house in the background. Once they've had the, there was a moment where she's been made the May Queen, 
Mm. And you know she's still on a trip and everything around her is just flexing around and wafting mm. around. I, I love all that sort of stuff. I think it's brilliant. Mm. So I I can deep dive on this. I love all this. Um, mm. And it, it's a, a daytime horror. And I think I really appreciate it for that because, yeah. you know me, not a fan of horror. So setting it in daytime, it, sh- it you have to rely on other things other than the man in the closet. Yeah, it's that whole thing of, you know, what what is it that's actually freaking you out? Hmm. Is it- and uh, I think when Christian gets drugged, when he's sat at the table, when she's been made the May Queen, and I know he's a, an utter bastard, mm. but I have sympathy for him because he just doesn't know what's going on. He's off his mash. He's being led up the garden path and he, he isn't really in control of anything then. He's mm. just being abused, isn't he? Well, maybe we should, I mean, maybe we should uh, start with him because, I mean, I get what you're talking about. I get what you're talking about. But, I mean, I, I, Darren, feel free to step in because, you know, mm-hmm. we've all got to have a different opinion on this. But yeah. he's... To me, everything he does is just exacerbated by him being a fucking moron. Yep. I would totally agree. He's also a last minute moron. Yeah. As well. Oh, um, I told you uh, while you were just drifting off to sleep that I really wanted to do this thing. And so I'm doing it now. Yeah. But what, the you trip know, itself. It, yeah. Yeah. That Anything. Anything. Oh, I'm doing this as my thesis now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, but I told you I wanted to do it. Yeah, but mate, you just you're just pulling this out there. Yeah, I know, but I, you know what? I thought it in my head. So why didn't you know? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you know I wanted to do this? I'm doing yeah. it now. Surely that's enough for you. What yeah. Twat. I mean, that's the that's the thing. I mean, I, I mean, for me with Christian, it starts off with that sort of they tried to sort of warm you up to him insofar as you know he's clearly trying to end the relationship but he hasn't got the guts to do so yeah and normally in a film like this he would go full on bad you know he'd be like i'm gonna just be like "Mm, whatever Mm, just just a total dude bro but there's there's elements where he's kind of like showing sympathy and showing guilt and that's fine but then what happens is everything that happens after that is him being an absolute knob. He goes in full Prometheus mode mm-hmm. of like someone coming up and giving him drugs and he goes, what's that? And they say, oh, it reduces your inhibitions. So it's like, what do you think that could possibly mean given the fact that the ginger girl's giving you the eye and has stuck pubes in your fucking... In your in your pie, and and your drink is clearly a totally different color from everyone else's drink on the table, and all this kind of thing. And that, to me, yeah. is when my sympathy goes, because even if he is an absolute asshole all the way through, you've got that kind of well, you at least understand his perspective, if not necessarily agree with it. So he's willingly taking the drugs, yeah, and knowing seems- that his inhibitions will be lowered. Yeah, it, it's 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 that kind of I've got I've got plausible deniability because I got taken the, I took the drugs and then all of a sudden oh no what happened I was balls deep in a in a in a, a, a Swedish maiden it's like really is that well is we've that all it? been there haven't we <sighs> so many times I can't even <laughs> so many times I can't even count it and to be honest I've I've given up counting you know I'm just gonna go over here. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's my problem is I don't I don't find myself sympathetic to him at all. And every time I sort of feel like I'm coming around to sort of like saying, well, okay, he's trying to be a nice guy, he's trying to let her down gently, but he hasn't got the guts to do it. It's just being weak as a human. Suddenly he does something absolutely horrible or just thoughtless. Or just idiotic, and you just think, "Oh no, mate, you 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 brought all of this on yourself. Absolutely every last yep. mortal thing." And then you know, and I and I didn't feel anything for his ultimate fate. I was just like, "Yeah, you got what you fucking deserved, mate." Frankly, 
<laughs> what about you, Elton? I, 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 mean... I don't think anyone really deserves his his fate. Well, the, the ultimate fate. But I I know what you mean. Well, I mean, in the context uh, of the story, definitely. I mean, the ultimate fate. No, perhaps I don't. I don't think anyone deserves to be sewn up into a bear and fucking set on fire while drugged <laughs> off your mat. I'm a bear <laughs> up a tree on Hampstead <laughs> Heath. The one thing that made me laugh. <laughs> Hello, I think of it. I'm bear. Right. Yeah, go on. <laughs> it's it's the fact that you've got those two other blokes who gave themselves voluntarily. Right? Okay, they're mm. sat there in the church. Mm. It's burning down. The, 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 the bloke comes along early and goes feel no pain right mm. and he sat there looking at the other and all of a sudden he goes oh fuck and he's like i'm on fire <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking shit i've made a terrible mistake exactly. <laughs> oh the goggles they do nothing <laughs> well that was that's why i kept laughing it's things like that it's just like oh fuck yeah but anyway I sorry think, that makes me laugh now i think back to it though that's mm. the thing it didn't make me laugh at the time because i think i don't know i think i had my hand <laughs> over my mouth or something because it was just like what the fuck is going on here why yeah. is he being sewn into a bear suit <laughs> what, why has that man got flowers for eyes what is going on oh no the guy with the the flowers for eyes did you the, see the what fucking, they and the, the lungs Simon. for wings yeah. as he, well he was alive wasn't he mm. Yeah, he was. He was breathing. Yeah, those lungs cause... were breathing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's think. the. I think that's the closest to the the most horrifying thing in the entire film, to be honest. Because yeah. you sort of go, oh god. And I know I've often gone on about I don't like horror when they just do gore for gore's sake, but something like that has got shock value. That's See, proper. I, I, I wouldn't say that was gore though. It, it's not like blood and guts and. People slipping over on on the shit all over got, the place. The geese has got his lungs sticking out of his rib cage, out of his back. I suspect that might be gore. I I, I know what you mean, but <laughs> in not, when not, I think of gore, I think of sticky stuff and blood all over the place and entrails falling over, and it it reserves itself from that. I, I suppose all the chickens have fed upon everything else that they have there, but. Mm-hmm. It's it's more shock than anything, and the creepiness of like flowers in his eyes is just oh my god! Mm. It's so the whole so thing, grim. the whole thing's bizarre. Mm. That, you know, it's uh, it's like the the fact that they're all shit liars as well. <laughs> there, oh yeah, your boyfriend, yeah, yeah, he went off in a car, yeah, oh, he took the bus already. Well, he's, he's gone down the station. Yeah. What? Yeah, he's, yeah, and we don't we don't break we don't break laws we don't break the uh, driving laws around here. <laughs> yeah. he, he left without you. <laughs> I mean, the the thing is with the lying thing. I I got I got that, and even though they were shit liars, I got that because that's that's all about just keeping them calm until the drugs and everything else can happen. Yep. I understood that. That just made made perfect sense to me. I just. I didn't sit there going, "Oh no, nobody's nobody's trying to run away." It's like, no, you, you don't want to believe what's going on, so your brain just goes, "Okay, he's told me something vaguely plausible. I'm going to believe it." Yep. So I was, I wasn't too, I wasn't too bothered by that, to be honest. <clears throat> what about you, Elton? I mean, you said you did. You feel any sympathy for for Christian then? Um. What. Well... I, I think I did when he was sat at the table, but yeah, I suppose looking back on it and talking to you guys, he voluntarily took that drug mm. to lower his inhibitions. Mm. And so he's well, he he's already taken their drugs before. And so he knows that they really do kick in and, and they're serious. Mm. And so he has decided, oh, do you know what? Fuck it. Let's just go for it. You know, and mm. no one is paying him attention at that time as well, are they? No. All the other people have gone. Mm. Mark's been killed. Josh, 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 sorry, Josh has been killed and Connie and Simon have all, all been removed as well. Mm-hmm. And he's left there on his own because Danny is doing the dance and all focus is on the people doing the dance and her as well. Mm. And so he's just an observer. He he, he doesn't yeah. really want to be there anymore. I th- I think that's all. All the fun and games have have been and gone. He's off his mash. And I'm trying to remember where he's returning from. Where's he returning from? 
Um, I can't remember. Oh, he was just dancing. He was just dancing about, and then sort of came out and sat down and gave her the hmm. Mardi look when she was doing the Maid Queen dance. Ah, uh, no, he, he he got taken to that room about hmm. the bear, didn't he? Yeah, and probably question. He was questioned about something. I forget why he was. They because because they blamed Josh for taking the um the book. Yeah, and also ah. Uh, uh, Marja, she is. She's chosen you. Are, are you willing for this? And he's mm. like, well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. well, I am maybe, maybe entitled to do that. I'm not too mm, sure. I could, I could be persuaded. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. I, I think at that point, it all focus is off of him because it's all on Danny and becoming the May Queen, and mm. so he's just decided, oh fuck it, I'll, I'll neck it. Who gives a shit what happens? <laughs> well, yeah. well, if you knew he's going to end up in a bear in a burning building then i think you may have thought again i was gonna say but again that goes back to what i'm saying he's not thinking he's he's just reacting and he's just such a arse i mean even if you just remove danny from the equation what he does to his mate josh by just fucking just yeah. sort of going oh yeah i know you've been studying all this and all this but you and you you knew about this thing and you brought us all out here mm-hmm. and you planned it all but you know what? I think I'm going to do exactly what you're doing because I like it. And then when Josh tries to talk to him and says, "Oh, so did you um, did you see the book?" and he's like, "Oh, you want to talk to me now?" It's like, "Oh, for fuck's sake, don't come off, come off your fucking high horse and piss yeah. off." Yeah. Well, you could say that goes back to the very first scenes as well, mm. where Danny is phoning him up, and he's mm. oh god, she's phoning me again. Mm. And she's worried about her parents. She's worried about her sister as mm. well. Mm. And at that moment, I think he decides, no, oh, don't worry about her. You know, she's just going off on one again. We've mm. seen this all before. And Danny said, no, no, this is different. This, mm. It feels different. And he's like, ah, oh, don't look, it'll be fine. Don't worry. Mm. And maybe if he was more supportive, more in that relationship, then he may have been like, look, let's go over there. Let's get someone over there just to make sure. Let's see mm. what's going on. And everything could have been stopped at that mm. moment, mm. but it wasn't. No. It was the selfishness of, I can't be asked to deal with this at the moment. Look, it'll be fine. Don't worry. Yeah. You carry on sleeping. I'm going off to this party for 45 minutes. Mm. Really? Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sure we've all had relationships where we've we've kind of gone, oh, you know, actually, I think this is all over and done with, or you know, someone else does it to you. But that there, there's a level of callousness that's going on here that I just I can't even. Oh yeah, I can't it's, square that circle. I just um, can't. It's it's definitely self centered. Um, his whole thinking is is me, 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 me. Mm. What can I get out of it? Me, 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 me. Mm. Oh man, I don't want to be in. I don't have to go through all the pain of having to break up. Me, mm. me, 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 me. Not once thinking, you know what? She's going through a real bad time at the moment. Mm. I should be there yeah. for her. Yeah. You know, just help her out. I know she's really frantic, but, um, you know, let's just bite the bullet on this one. And, uh, you know, just whatever she throws at me, just take it. Just yeah. take it, you know. A little bounce she, out of that. She's, mm. she's clearly ill from the very beginning as well. She's taking um, anti- antidepressants. Or it's yeah. anti-anxiety medicine mm. that she right. was taking. Oh, right. I didn't know that. I thought it was just antidepressants. No, no, it's anxiety. So, that, you know, there's, there's there's something there, isn't there? And mm. he's aware of that. But, mm. yeah, he's just not helping. He, mm. He's not there. He's not committed. Guys are fucking arse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. As soon as I, I, I... I mean, okay, let's go through. let's go through the main thing with her. I mean, with that Danny. I mean, she's the main character, obviously. Mm-hmm. And what do you think the story is actually about? I mean, we have the, you know, because most horror films, good ones, mm-hmm. have two levels, sometimes more. Yeah. You have the, here's actually what's going on in front of you. You know, he's a monster, but actually we're talking about, you know, male fear of pregnancy um what does it oh represent yeah what does it represent what's what's actually going on underneath the surface what do you think Dal? i mean do you want to wade in on this i don't know um it's it it 
it made me sad watching that bit where you could tell he's got the power in the relationship, right? He has, he holds a lot of sway over it, whether he likes it or not, um, because he threatens to walk out and she crumbles. She's mm. like, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry for pointing mm. out that you're a complete and utter dickhead, mate. You know, yeah. um, you know, oh, I, I, um, uh, uh, but what, and it's just, it's really sad to see her mm. go through that. Mm. I think I've probably been in that situation myself. You mm. know, it's that you're, you're desperately, you know, you're willing to take the blame for something that mm. you didn't do because you've been made to feel like you're in the wrong. Mm. And you're convinced because you really like that person. Well, it's gaslighting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Right. And he, you know, he, he's he, all he needs is a fucking stick with a candle on the end. And yeah, that, mm. you know, it's complete the fucking look for the gaslighting, of mm. course. Um, so, yes, he is a gaslighting motherfucker mm. um, who basically uh, will make a decision. And if you don't like it, then, you know, fuck off. Mm. I don't care. I don't care how much notice I haven't given you that I'm going to make this you know, this real quite large decision, mm. you know, I don't care how much it affects you. I don't care if you're still suffering from, you know, finding out your parents fucking well um, were either murdered by your sister or voluntarily mm. um, died. I'm pretty sure they were murdered by the bipolar sister who then, yeah. you know, chopped well, herself. Were. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, I, I know you're you're still dealing with this, but, you know, the fact that I want to go away is a lot more important. Yeah. I'll be honest. Mm. Yeah, because I'm bored now with you and your feelings. Mm. Um, yeah. So I'm off. Laters. Mm. Um, peace. <laughs> yeah, peace out, mm. motherfuckers. Um, mm. So there's that. I mean, he's enabled by, you know, one or two of his friends there. Especially um, the one who gets offed first. Mm. Um, what's his Mark. name? The one by Mark. Bob Wilk. Yeah, yeah, that one. It gets turned into a, a fucking Mark suit. Um, yeah. <laughs> him. He's not any better mm. than... than oh, you know I mean, those no. two are perfect, perfect friends for one another. Mm. They really are. Mm. Um, and then you've got uh, the other guy as well, who isn't as bad as Josh. Mark. Josh, right? Mm. He's he's still not, um, you know, he's still not brilliant. But I mean, Jesus Christ, I'll take him over the other two any day. You know, if I had to be in a room with someone, then yeah, him. Um, but what is this film? What is this film about? I don't think it's it, there's. It's basically it's madness. This this woman gets pushed to the nth degree by the end of it she becomes so anxiety ridden that she becomes numb to it and mm -hmm. that's it you just see her sitting there smiling yeah it's just oh it's i suppose it's about madness how far you know can you push a person mm -hmm. i don't know there's no nobody really wins mm. in this film you know there's no like um oh um you know the boyfriend's burning in a building, so yay! The you know the the, the Florence Pugh's character has learned how to stand on her own feet. No, mm. she doesn't win by the end of it. She's trapped in this community by mm. the end of it. That's it. Uh, They've... See, I have a different mm. thought of that. Yeah, yeah. Go on then. I don't, don't want to jump over oh, it. Go on then. No, no, go cool. go for it. Go for it. I, I think this film is about family. Okay. And she has lost her family at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And she's searching for something all the way through this movie. And she sticks with her boyfriend, even though he's been a bit of a dick towards her. And she goes to the party and learns about the, the trip. And she tries to become part of his family and his friends. And try to make an allowances for him. Yeah, That's what she does. Yeah. But, you know, she, she's trying to be part of that. And then she gets taken on this trip. And at the end, mm. she realizes by casting Christian into the, the burning building, she removes all of that. Everyone else is gone. 
and she has become part of a family. Mm. She has found her family. She ha- hasn't got any need for these anxiety pills anymore. She hasn't got any need for him anymore. She hasn't got a family, uh, her real family or anything like that. Although there are words on the internet, possibly of her mum and dad and sister being there. Because mm. there is that shot where you do see her her dad, you do see her mum, you do see her sister. And there's other visuals as well. But I I think it's about her losing one family, searching for another one, and then finding something else. Right. I mean... I, 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 I think she's fully signed up for this. She's mm. receiving emails and everything about this now. She mm. loves, not loves this life, but she is now fully endorsed into this life and almost looking forward to jumping off that rock at 72. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's a good point. I mean, that's, that's her ultimate fate, I guess. But I mean, as far, as far as I, as far as I saw it, the real, the real plot about it, the real driving thing was empathy it was all about empathy because when you see her at the beginning she's just in a room on her own everyone she talks to is down either down the phone on email or you know you know she completely detached and everything and when she you know when things happen like when the ter- horrible thing happens with her parents and the sister you know and she's screaming and yelling and being upset and everything. The the boyfriend's there, but he's not really there. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and then when she walks into the room to meet her meet his friends, they're all very blocked off. They're not really engaging with her. Everything's very awkward and stilted. Mark, the Will Porter character, really doesn't like her. Um mm-hmm. the Josh character um, gets up and basically, as soon as she comes in the room, basically gets up and fucks off, like on a pretense of going to the toilet. You know, everyone's kind of distanced, and it's only—is it Petrov or Peter or whatever his name is? Who's the other one? Uh, the... Pele, isn't it? Pele, that's it. And it's only Pele who starts to show any kind of empathy. And once he does that, because that's the first—that's the first thing he starts to say to her—is actually. I had parents who I lost. Yeah, well, how did he lose his parents? Yeah, he lost them in a fire. Yeah. Yeah, what happens is, at the end? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. Oh, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> given up and given up as part of nine. Yes. But, but that's but that's but the thing is it's that whole thing of he he's the first bit of actual real physical empathy that you see in the film towards her. And then what you see in the film as you go into the the actual commune, the commune itself, they they all react to each other. They all feel the pain. So you get that when when old man Smithers takes a swan dive off the cliff, mm-hmm. and he, he hits the ground and he hasn't died. But as soon as he hasn't died, and he's wheezing away, staring at his own uh, heels you know, lying there, everyone starts screaming. But they're not screaming as in like, oh no, he's fallen off a bridge, uh, fallen off a cliff. They're actually screaming from pain. Yeah. And so they're empathising with him. And they don't stop screaming until old Captain Toffee Hammer comes along and (laughs) wallop. (laughs) Toffee Hammer. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, um, Garden Centre Thor comes along, but you know, you could pick either one. You know, pick a choice, pick your lane, and go for it. And then what happens is, as the film goes on, you see her transform. So she starts off in these dark colours, and then she slowly, you know, goes to make that bread stuff. And as she does, she gets a na- and a sort of napkin on that changes her slightly to white. And then as she goes further into the whole thing, and she gets and people start to, you know, acknowledge her and treat her nicely, and actually ask her about herself. And Peter does that whole thing of, you know, sorry, 
not Peter, Pele starts doing things like doing pictures for her and talking to her nicely and, you know, again, trying to engage with her on a sort of emotional level. She slowly turns, her her costume goes lighter and lighter and lighter until eventually she's in the dress. And then it finally comes about with when she stares through the window, uh, stares through the lock, sees sees old fucking little little blue and white striped Chris Pratt having it away with the um <laughs> with the gin, with the gingerbread, and yeah. then gingerbread. What am I talking about? The 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 the, the what's no, her name? Let's let's go with gingerbread. That's ah, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I I didn't even think about it. But anyway, so she, they. He sees her having, you know, having sex with this 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 girl, and all these naked women standing around him, and she kind of throws up. She has this anxiety attack and everything. And what happens is all the all the women who are with her, a retinue, comes in, and as she starts to scream, they start to scream. They start to empathise with her. Yeah. So it's that's what it's all about. It's that whole thing that. She's she's been lo- not just looking for family. The family isn't really the thing because it, it's you know because she even she's like distant from her sister. You know, oh, she's just doing a her dramatic thing again, writing ominous emails and then just you know fucking off. It's actually the whole. It's actually the whole thing with kind of like actual empathy, actual connection, actually, you know, she feels something, other people feel it too. You know, and people understand her, and she, you know want to be around her and positively reinforce her. And so, really, when she sets old Christian on fire, um, you know, plays plays Barney the bear and sticks him in the cupboard and sets him on fire. Mm-hmm. Essentially, what she's doing is she's getting rid of her life that was toxic. She's getting rid of all of it. She's burning it out because that's what that's what the guy says. He says, you know, we've got to pay, you know, we've got to get rid, we've got to purge the evils, the yeah. evils around us. So they pick, they pick four, they pick the four from, you know, that have been brought already. They pick four at random from the, from the group, um, you know, from the, from the commune. And then she has to pick the one last bit of evil in the, in the commune and get rid of it. And that's the end of that. Um, I'm just wondering about the nine. So you, the two people fell off the cliff. They're two of them, aren't they? Yes. Then you got the two volunteers. Yeah. The oh my god, the yew yeah. tree. It does nothing. <laughs> and then you got uh, the two guys who turned into scarecrows. Old uh, Lungs McFadden as well. Mm. Yep. Simon the Great Eagle, yeah, yeah, and and the bear, mm, yeah, Barney Bear, <laughs> Barney Bear, super dead, <laughs> Bungle, Bungle Bear, Bungle, <laughs> Bungle, what have you done now? <laughs> I appear to have set fire to the barn, Zippy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at him, Zippy, he's on fire. <laughs> Oh yes, he is. Oh yes. <laughs> we know a song about setting people on fire, don't we, children? <laughs> oh no, he's the, the, the wheels, the wheels on the fire, and you go round and round, <laughs> round and round. Um. Anyway, this this is this is another another set of gags that anyone under the age of about forty will just completely not get. Um. Yeah, so that was so that's it for me. It's just empathy, right? But I I can see that. I mm. yeah, I I think that works well. The only the only downside is that I felt no empathy for any of the characters no. in the film whatsoever. Which <laughs> is kind of a shame. There are some lovely little nods all the way through, though. As I said, I like a film where it it drops little hints all the way through, mm. and you have. Will Paul Holter's character, uh, what's his name again? Mark, Mark. is it? Yeah. yeah, Mark. And he he um he pisses up that tree, and there's there's a beautiful moment because they've just killed these other these two people that have fallen off the um mm. off, off, off the the stone, mm. 
and they've burnt their bodies. And yeah. it's clearly the next day when they're removing the ashes yep. and doing something very solemn and walking them over and then scooping them up and laying them onto this tree. And there mm. he is just having a slash up against it. Yep. And you're like, oh, you're such an idiot. But also when they first get there and you first meet the two British people, mm. Lungs McFlad and, and, and the other lady who <laughs> I think she was drowned. I think it's... Uh, it's she's very wet she's one of the the bodies that has been taken over in the um yeah in the wheelbarrows and she's drenched yeah Un and unconvincing doll number five I that's it yeah, yeah. It yeah. Just, that was not a convinced that was not a convincing body i well, don't care I, what anyone says i don't think there's much of her left it could just be the skin mm. because they are turning them into scarecrows aren't they mm. but there's a moment where they're all doing that the joining of the hands and doing all the dancing around and they oh what what are they playing oh they're playing skin the fool mm. which refers to mark and yeah. if you look because I, I like doing this i looked at the tapestry that they had at the very beginning and the mark character in the tapestry has got the little uh, jester hat on That's in right. which he is burnt mm. Mm. and it's like it's just telling you everything that's happening and I love picking up on these little things that are all the way through. Mm. There's also that moment. Um, they all do this little <gasps> breathing, yeah. don't they? Yeah. yeah. And I don't know what that represents, but there's a moment where old silly bollocks Christian hasn't got Danny a birthday present. He, he gets some sort of candle and cake. He's trying to light it and she blows it out and she does that. <gasps> mm. And it's, it's kind of echoing forwards later yeah. on that that will be happening. Oh, it's just, I love all this sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah, I mean the 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 whole deep breath thing is is pulling air in, isn't it? It's pulling air in with whatever hallucinogen you've done. You're hyper oxygenating yourself. Ah, see, okay. Because a silly confession from years gone by, but um, you'll remember this, Dal. Do you remember Colin yeah. Smith? Um, yeah. Do you remember we used to go around there and then occasionally there would be like sort of like mixing drinks? Mm. I don't know if you remember that bit. I don't know if you were around for that, but but there no, was probably wasn't no. there was there was one drink that we mixed called a trip, which was essentially Tia Maria and um what's it? What was it? Southern Petrol. Comfort. <laughs> Southern Comfort and Tia Maria. And so the idea is you mix you, you took a two sh you took a shot of each and you swallowed it around in your mouth. So it was mm -hmm. like a sort of, like a sort of, I don't know, scotch orange chocolate thing. And what you would do is you swallow it around in your mouth, so you get this kind of alcohol vapors kind of burning off, and then you swallow it. But as you swallow it, you go, and you took a in, and it was like literally you just inhaling pure alcohol vapor straight into the back of your neck, and it was just like, well, oh, wow. thanks, for, thanks very much, and I'm out. So yeah, as soon as it's on the back of your throat. Then yeah, that's straight into the blood circulation, and that isn't was, it? And that was the thing, and that's that's what I got from that was that it's exactly what they were doing. They were taking that whole thing and you know, and <sighs> yeah, taking it down. But um, what I was going to say, if you want to talk about deep dives, did you look at some of those runes? In what respect? Yeah. Sorry, no. Nah. Well, well, if you firstly there was a couple of shots above the table above the tables and some of the tables were actually in the rune symbols yes the r oh yeah, yeah. The, the the one where they were all at um where they were waiting to sit down and eat yeah that was a rune yeah that was a rune but if you look that the runes were different on all the different um on the different robes yes and 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 I'm not going to claim I knew this so don't don't worry about that but I looked up a sort of documentary and it turns out Ariaster sort of studied, as part of the whole thing, um, Nordic runes. Right. And the runes that are on each of their character, each of the characters that you see, basically tells you what's going on. So, mm -hmm. you, so when you see Christian, he's got one that looks like a sort of basically an arrow pointing straight up. This Just is when he's in these white things. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's right. And what it is is a char it's a rune that sort of symbolizes a character who is pure masculine god, but 
the masculine god ends up sacrificing himself for the greater good. Right. And then when you look at one for um for Danny when she's the May Queen, she's got that backwards arm, which actually um actually is this is something symbolizing like the start of a journey. And then she's got another one, another symbol, I can't remember which one it was. But she's got an oh yeah, the one that looks like um looks like a sort of like egg timer, the black widow kind of symbol, the um yeah. two two triangles. And that can mean one of two things. And one of them is is that she's um she's unsettled or she's still got far to go. And the other one is that she's she's actually um exploring and and trapped and she wants to get away. So the so the runes themselves were actually telling you what was going on, and in fact, the table configuration does exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. So that so that when you see the table the first time, it's an R, and it's like the start of the journey. And then when you see that when she's the May Queen, it's it's a it's a line pure from left to right, which is actually the feminine version of that Thor one, which is pointing straight up. Yeah. So, so the table itself is, and everything like that, is kind of symbolising what's going on here, <laughs> which I thought was really interesting, and in, including the um, the runes on that marker when they cut their hands. Oh, they the, put the blood on them. They yes. put the blood on them, and it is the one. The it's the backwards R again, but the ones on either side are symbolising the start of the journey and the end of a journey. So, essentially, they put the blood on the two runes to yeah. mark the fact that they've done the start of the journey now they're doing the end of the journey and then <laughs> off they go right and there's so many little things like that where i mean he you know if like i say there's a there's a whole there's a site um a a, a guy i can't remember what the bloody youtube is called it's called something like um like um, w- um, like Wicked Day or something like that. I'll I'll find it and I'll put it on the, the Facebook group. But he does this thing called Deep or Dumb, and the, and he broke down all of that shit with with um Midsummer, and you're just like, wow, that's cl- that's cleverer than I thought. Yeah, a lot more cleverer than I thought, which kind of helped me from just going, oh for fuck's sake, this is just self indulgent old bollocks. <laughs> Which it, is it where could I have was. gone like that, yeah, yeah. Well, there, there's a moment where you have the inbred, and mm. you, you don't really get a lot with. I, I think it's a him, isn't it? I'm not too sure. Believe so. And it's after she's been made the May Queen, and you've got Christian sat in his wheelchair, and they're presenting, and he he's just scribbling away in these books. Mm. And obviously, mm. he is like a deity to them, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, because yeah. he he has that inbred bloodline, mm. but he's sat on a cloud. Yeah, he's, he's on a big cloud. You know, that's so far removed from what we're actually doing right now. Mm. You're just saying he is God. Up well, in his cloud, looking he's down. a prophet, isn't he? That's yeah. the thing. So, yeah, <laughs> but he's not. He, he's he's just scribbling away in books, and then they interpret it. That's yeah. what they do. And the wor- the worst thing is, is when he dies, there'll be a non profit organization. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, man! You just couldn't help yourself, could you? <laughs> Sorry. You need to go back on the fucking tablets. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. Um, Darren, you were saying about him being a prophet. Go on. Who the? Uh, well, he, yeah. He, that's what the guy says. He's like he's um, you know, he's got abilities uh, to interpret various things because he is inbred because he's kept the um the bloodline so pure, mm. and that's why they do it. Apparently, and I think it's that's not just that culture. I think there are other cultures that are, you know, have believed that in the past. Mm. You know, I know that uh, the royal family, the British royal family, uh, you know, 
has come. Very let's close. let's 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 not get completely sued by the royal. Family, no, no, we're please. talking about in the past, right? It, I'm, I'm I'm talking like medieval times stuff. Uh, you know, it's um we're talking. You know, I think second cousins and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, riding close to the edge there. Good save. <laughs> yeah, riding close to the edge. Um. So yeah, you know, it's not the only culture that's held that kind of individual as special. Um, mm. You know, ignoring the uh, the process that made them in the first place, of course. Yes. You know, mm. Mm. yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying. I've, I've lost my place now. I, I was thinking <laughs> thinking about that. There was uh, another shot that I really liked as well, mm-hmm. and uh, I I did a, a few videos and looking through this, and someone mentioned this. Mm. of when they first arrive at the community Mm. and you have that big sun that they have to walk through. Uh, Mm. You're joining Danny as she walks through that big sun at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And you're you're on her perspective. And so you're like, oh, I've been welcomed into this. You're you're Mm. there to observe their rituals and stuff like that but there is also a shot from the other side of the community looking at them and watching the new the new contestants kind of walking in and going ah here are our subjects that we will torture and fuck around with and and pass on to our uh, uh, burning buildings mm. it's a really subtle but really kind of creepy when you actually work it out yeah i was gonna i was actually gonna ask this question when i was watching it do you think if they just observed and done what they said they were going to do which is turn up observe have a party leave Mm -hmm. if they hadn't done all the other shit like you know josh getting involved with the the book and trying to you know trying to study them bug bugging the elders if Christian hadn't sort of like, you know, chased after the um the the was it the new bile you know new blood or whatever her name was she was given as some sort of special name mage yeah mage showing Hiller. interest yeah mm. and if if you know Mark hadn't pissed on the sacred tree would any of it have happened because I the one thing I kind of keep coming back to is the fact that that everything happens including the poor poor Lon- londoner simon all happens because they freak out and threaten to bring the police and go off and find other people and say it's all fucked up and the the community wants its secrecy it wants to keep itself to itself hmm. and when I, the two people from london say that they're off and they're just not happy about it you know that's it that's the end of that and when you see um you know Marx pisses on the pisses on the the log you know the tree you know his card's marked pardon mm. the phrase when you see josh say can i take a photograph of the of the book and they go absolutely not and it's like well okay don't do that then oh you have well mm-hmm. tough shit yeah and it's and when you talk when you when they first arrive, Pele actually says that the only one they're really interested to see is Danny. Um, so I... could she have just turned up, done the Mayday thing, and the everyone else just left if they hadn't freaked out? Who knows? I don't think so. I think they were. They were brought in for these reasons because mm. they knew they would fuck up. Mm. Pele has been he's there guiding them in, isn't he? He's done four years of anthropology just to bring them in. <laughs> no, he's he's there and he's worked out his subjects and they've been sent out into the world because there was the other guy who brought the the British guys in. Mm. And so they have been challenged and set the task of go out get more recruits, get more sacrifices. Mm. 
get yeah. in with a, a little group, bring them along and we'll, we'll use them. Mm. And showing them the, the falling of, of the two people, that is going to shock people to their core because they are not expecting people to be committing suicide like this. Mm. It's a real graphic way. It's not just a, oh yeah, let's just draw them a, a nice warm bath and uh, let them be off. No, this is, they are having to jump and you hear that. You hear that reverberate around that, that area. <laughs> you hear that. Yeah, you hear that. <laughs> Someone's but dropped a jelly on the floor. Hold on. I, I don't <laughs> think there was any, any getting out of this. They are there to be sacrificed. Mm. And the more people they can get, the less people they lose from their community. Mm. Yeah. The only reason they had to sacrifice two of theirs is because they needed the nine. Mm. But also, I think they needed the um, they need the bloodline extended. Yes, they you need... take you take some old people out and some existing people out, and then you yeah. bring, you know, bring Christian in, and you know, and Danny. You can only imagine what's going to end up happening with her. Well, yeah, I think she's fully indoctrinated. Uh, indoctrinated? Indoctr mm. I can't say that word. Yes. <laughs> Indoctrination. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, into that family. Mm. She will go through that whole process now. She will have her... She's in her midsummer, isn't she? Yeah. She will then go into her autumn and then winter. She will probably have kids and the, the, the cycle will carry on again. She mm. might even be sent out to recruit even more people yeah probably she might see the community is such a precious thing fuck the rest of the world because it's just screwed me over mm. i will go out there and retrieve more people for sacrifice mm. yeah maybe it's more than likely i mean the way it was going she i mean she's she's but bought in hook line sinker and copy of angling time she's totally in on it yeah absolutely mm, for sure for sure mm. Um. Right. Uh, what was I gonna say next? Uh, um, I don't know. Oh, the problem. The problem with this is it's one of those films that you you watch. I mean, I tell you what. Was anyone actually scared of this film? Was any at any point did you actually get scared? Um, scared. No, more. More. It was more anxiety. But then mm. that's due to, you know, linking in, um, you know, personal stuff that's happened mm. with this. Not so much the film itself. Yeah. It just, like I say, it's just that whole thing of you think of someone you love in danger. Yeah. And the whole thing of, you know, what would you do to get them the fuck out of there? Yeah. And that's, that's more the effect it had on me is me getting well into thinking about that during that film mm. you know and you're like why are you doing that now fucking hit him in the face with that thing you know it's stupid people doing stupid things mm. right that's one aspect of all horror movies that you'll find no matter how intelligent they might be at some point that rule applies because mm. people run out of ideas of how to push a story forward and so stupid people doing stupid things comes in yes and there's a lot of this hmm in the film. Not that it didn't, you know, like I say, it, it still made me feel the way I feel. I mean, maybe I, that's not anything to do with, like, great writing. Maybe that's just a coincidence. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Because, I mean, because <laughs> I, I mentioned it, I only mentioned it in passing because one of the problems I had with the whole yeah. thing was the fact that, frankly, Folk horror doesn't do anything for me. No, I'm not a fan of um I know a lot of people rave about the Wicker Man. Mm. Right? Um me personally, I it does nothing for me. It no. really doesn't. I'm it's just a weird film as far as I'm concerned. I've seen it, I've I've attempted it a couple of times and um mm. yeah. No, yeah. I mean, at least you get a laugh out of the Nicolas Cage version. The you bees, know, oh god, that's no. the bees, that's sexy bees. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's, um, punch a bear as well. Yeah, yeah, you punch a bear. 
oh dear God. No, you know, no, he was in the bear. He punched someone in the face wearing the bear costume. Oh, did he? Didn't he? Pu- oh, okay. Sorry. No, he punched someone in the face with the bear. He he had a grip on the bear and <laughs> used that as a boxing glove. No, lady turns around and she goes, um, "Is everything okay, sister?" Because she she sees the bear coming towards her, and then yeah. all of a sudden it's, it's <laughs> the bear just suddenly plants one on the on the on the cultist. <laughs> Doof! <laughs> it's the silliest thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Fucking great bear bloke in a bear the costume. Bees. Oh dear God, the bees! No, they're in my eyes. <laughs> um, I, I was yeah, was I scared? Was um, you scared? And do, and does does that sort of uh, does folk horror bother you? No, it doesn't. No, mm. I, I. But I think I enjoy it because it doesn't scare me. I can right. actually sit down and enjoy it. And then because it's folk horror, it's it's like religious, almost horror, where, where mm. you get into like devils and demons and stuff like that. It's that kind of scares me a bit more than anything. Because right. you know, is it real? No, of course it isn't. But is yeah. it real? No, of course it is. It. Don't be silly. But is it real? I don't know. I don't know. Go upstairs and check. Go upstairs and just check out your uh, TV still in the loft. Oh, don't, 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 don't. They are <laughs> still there. Don't worry. I know they're still there. Yeah. They um, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> um. But no, it, it, I, I suppose. It is anxiety through this film mm. for me, but the closest it gets to horror, and I think we mentioned this with mm. old, old uh, butterfly guy, um, when Christian is running around naked and then he sees the foot being used as fertilizer in, <laughs> in, the, in the flower bed, you're like, oh my God, what? Uh, we know exactly where that foot's from. And then he runs into the barn, and then he, you see that horrific guy just hanging up with his lungs out. You know, like, <laughs> my God, that's the most horrific it gets. Right. But it's not, I didn't get any scares from it. It's just more, ooh, what's going to happen next type thing. Yeah. Right. Because cause the thing is, uh, the reason I ask is because the, that's the biggest hurdle Midsummer has to overcome with me. Is the fact that you you're kind of you're kind of staring at um you're kind of staring at a bunch of stuff which just feels like being weird for being weird's sake, and how much of that actually disturbs you is purely down to how weird things get disturb you. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, I mean, I I feel like I could I could easily write a a folk ho- folk based horror movie just by basically buying a bunch of buying a <laughs> buying a bunch of animal masks from the local from the local sort of ent- entertainer and um yeah and then basically having people turn up in a field in Beckenham Place Park and just say right what I want you to do is I want someone to come out of this bush and go the rabbits, they are running. The rabbits, they are flying. And then just play a bit of flute music and then just keep doing weird shit like that, like looking yeah. at a pint of Scrumpy for an hour or or seeing birds and then just rewinding the camera or, you know, having a maypole but having everyone sing out of tune. And it's just like, it feels really a bit naff. I, I don't know. I, it's never worked for me, ever. The devils, um, the was it the was it Wicker Man? Both versions. Have you uh, done Endless? I haven't done Endless. No. no. Um, what's the other one? There's another cult one like that, which is, you know, it's just it's there just to sort of like, oh look, we're being weird, being weird. And to be honest, all I just think is, yeah, all right, you're a bit nuts, but you know. You're not regarding me, and I could just wander into this field and just keep walking in a straight line, and you wouldn't come after me. You'd all be sitting there doing fucking Morris dancing well, and trying to slap each other with a haddock. You have to think they they could have escaped at any time. If they'd all stuck together, mm. all left at the same time together, and mm. just walked off, mm. then maybe they could have got away because... I, 
possibly you would have had the whole village after you, but mm. you could have just said, look, no, we're not having this whatsoever. We're off. Yeah, but and, and exactly. And the problem is, you know, it's not so much... It, I mean, the problem I have is that as long as they're doing their routine, the folk horror is always about routine. It's always about things that have to happen. You have to have sex with this girl. You have to set fire to this animal. You have to, I don't know, anything. You know, you have to dance in a maypole circle. I mean, what if she had not done it? You know, and yeah. it, and the problem is when you, you know, especially with this film, when you're not emotionally engaged with the fate of the characters, because you think all of them are, in one way or another, manipulative and emotionally damaged, and you just like, I don't give a shit about the four dude bros, and you know she she needs she clearly needs actual psychological help. She doesn't need hmm. she doesn't need to be coming on this journey. You know, someone needs to be helping her out. So I'm just sitting there looking at it, thinking, right. Okay, don't drink the don't don't eat the pie. Mm -hmm. Don't go here. Don't do this. You know. Oh, you must drink this. You must wear this clothes. Don't it's take just, the bloody drugs. Yeah, exactly. You know, when the car pulls up, where's the car? Where's the car gone? Why doesn't anyone just get in the car that they drove in with? Mm. You know, and there's so much stuff where it do, where it does that. You and you pull the thread, and your brain just goes. Oh, this is all falling apart, like a badly knitted jumper. But you're supposed to be all weirded out and see. Oh, look, there's children running around with rabbit masks or something like that. You know, there's Jeffrey. Jeffrey Bum Donut is, um, you know, is praying to the sun. You know, I'm looking him up on IMDb. <laughs> Actually, Bum I said Donut. I wasn't. I said I wasn't going to call anyone Jeffrey anymore when I was making up names, didn't I? Last time. <laughs> Okay, Roger Bum Donut is. Um... Bum Donut. I like Jeffrey though. Jeffrey Bum Donut sounds more natural. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Jeffrey Bum Donut. <laughs> but the point is, it's just I don't know. It it's the same as it's the same as The Exorcist. The Exorcist yeah. doesn't work for me because I'm not religious. So all I'm doing is I'm watching a scary child be scary, but the scary child isn't getting out of the bed. And all he's doing is telling telling the pe telling the the religious people some bad bad words and making them feel bad. See, that's weird because I feel the same about The Exorcist. Mm. But when we did Borderlands, mm. yeah, it is a creepy film anyway. But I think the religious aspect adds to it. It does, and it does have a little bit of folk horror in there as well. Mm -hmm. But I think the problem is. Is it's not being weird for weird's sake? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That when you do Borderlands, it's a bit like Blair Witch. Blair Witch doesn't actually scare you. All it does is disturbs you because you just suddenly do what my dad said. You could say, right, okay, I'm just gonna walk in a fucking straight line and follow the sun. You know, end of story. Jobs are good, and pick up my phone and call someone. But the thing that hooks you in is the fact that, you know, the, the the scenario is built up to put you a normal person in that situation. Yeah. And why, whereas you've got religious elements with Borderlands, you've also got the, and this folk elements with like, you know, people, people saying that there's devil's mount or whatever it's called, knob hill or whatever it's called. You know, you've also got the villagers terrorizing the cameraman who is not religious you know, with burning sheep on their lawn. Yes. And, you know, there's a feeling of threat straight from the off. So before any of the crazy shit happens, you already don't feel safe, which is something yeah. entirely different from, like, something in folk horror, because folk horror is basically a village fate that just has a bit of a crazy doodar ending. Well, that's the thing, though. You are meant to feel safe at the very beginning, and it's the weirdness it's the uneasiness and the the differences between observing what they are what they class as normal and you working out as is this normal for them or is this a bit weird should i be worried hmm. and i find that entertaining because hmm. you have to find the line of 
this is normal up until a certain point where someone jumps off a cliff. Mm. It's, oh, the, look at this ritual. Okay, right, we sit down for dinner. So really, if you knew where this ends, you should be calling a halt to it immediately before that d- meal begins. But you don't. You go along with it because it's part of the ritual. It only mm. then becomes a bit weird when they jump off the the, the cliff face. But the thing I'm finding, the thing I find, especially with this, is that we've seen so many of these things, so many of these weird films, that when they do something weird like this, you're it's almost like you're 90 steps ahead of the characters. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, to see a weird film that actually wrong-foots you and makes you wonder what the fuck you're watching and creeps you out by being weird is actually something of a rarity. I mean, that... The, the last one that comes straight to mind is um, the lighthouse. You know, mm. yeah. I I thought that's that that's how you do weird. That's how you do strange. That's how you make people worried and disturbed. Yeah, that was excellent, though, wasn't it? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's what what I'm saying. It's a world away from this because this is just like folk horror playbook. It's like let's bring out the everything looking bright and sunshiny. But let's all put a little. But the mu. But it was the music, as I said right at the beginning. It's the music that was fucking things up because the music. You you walk into that field through that big sundial thing, and you see them all walk in, but then you get this sort of white noise thing come in, and it goes, and you're like, so the scene isn't disturbing you. The thing isn't disturbing you. The way they're acting is not disturbing you. It's the music going, Oi, it's a bit scary here, isn't it? It's a bit scary. <laughs> Have you noticed? Have you noticed it's a bit scary? Have you noticed it's a bit scary? Hold on. Eee, let me pull in some more discordant noises. Eee, whoa, ah, and then we just go, and just stop it. <laughs> it's just like, Welcome no. to our fate. Mm, Tom exactly. Bowler is at seven o'clock. Exactly. It's... <laughs> It's like if you put, if you just put some good old fashioned sort of like, you know, hurdy gurdy music in there as they walked in, would you be nearly as disturbed walking into that field of people doing Morris dancing? No, uh, no, no. But you, no. but you walk in and there's there's Haxon Cloak basically sitting there, fucking with his face down on the fucking high C of a fucking Moog, going. <laughs> Just in case you ain't got the fucking message. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> stab you with the fucking feels because you ain't getting the point. <laughs> you know? So, I don't know. Just just that. When music really gets manipulative, I kind of get a bit cross because mm-hmm. I feel like you're just pressing my buttons just to press my buttons. You, you've you shown me nothing to freak me out here. All you've done is you've just gone, you've just gone, boom, boom. Bomb, wee, bomb, wee, bomb, 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 wee, wee, and it's like, why? We're we're literally standing in a Seven Eleven buying a fucking packet of peanuts. You know, you've you've scared me. How? <laughs> I don't know. You've given me some music which is telling me be scared. Ooh, <laughs> it just bugs the fuck out of me. That. Yeah, I I understand. I. Mm. I like the creepiness though, but mm. folk horror doesn't really. I don't think it scares me. I'm, I'll have to go back on the f- the other films we've seen. Like we've seen the ritual. Do we do that? Yeah, one? we did. Yeah. yeah, we did. What's the one with the the big creature in the forest? Yeah, as well? that's, the, that's ritual. the ritual. Oh, is that the ritual? Yeah, with the yeah. with the big the big moosey yak deer that's thing it, with yeah. a person's body for a head. That's it, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to watch that again. Yeah, but that again, that's folk horror done right, because what that, to me, does is that puts some normal people in a situation which is actually freaking them out from the start, and they are freaked out. They're not watching, they're not watching basically an episode of Country File, but with a fucking, you know, new age electronica band throwing a fit. <laughs> That's true, but what they're doing there also, they're using day and night. And when it gets night and creepy, then you, you once again, you start doing the, the man coming out of the cupboard. Mm. Whereas this, you're meant to feel at home in the sunlight and everyone's really nice. And nothing really, well, I suppose 
uh, Josh gets knocked over at night, but I think that's the only real attack at night. Well, you say that, but we don't know what happened to Mark. We know he went off somewhere. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So, but yeah. most of it was is Mark. during the was day. That, the that was, one? That was, yeah, that was skin his face, bloke. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you got something in the corner of your mouth there, mate. Uh, the other <laughs> side. Oh, it's your face. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. But yeah, but um, I I really enjoy it. Can I? I yeah. just there's a couple of things I just want to bring. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, when they were doing the ritual, once she's become the May Queen and they're blessing all the crops and stuff like that, and they put mm. the grain down and the meat and the egg in mm. that hole. Mm. I was just sat there going, is that how cows and chickens are made? Just wondering how, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Obviously, I, I know it's not, but, you know, that. What do you mean it's not? Be... <laughs> <laughs> that cow trees just grow from there. Would it, would, it, would it help if I told you that they do? <laughs> not really, no. no. <laughs> and, uh. <laughs> The number nine as well. I know we have like nine sacrifices. Mm. Uh, what else was there? You, the life cycle is divid- divisible by nine as well, isn't it? So is it? you have up until 18 is your is it spring. Then 18 to, I forget what it is. I forget my nine times table. But then that's where you end up at 72. That's the end of That's the, right, the yes. life cycle. That's right, yes. Wasn't it 30, wasn't it 36 or something like that? Yeah, 36, 45, 54, yeah. 72, yeah. 72, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's very true. I mean, I like that. Yeah. And it, that room where, um, oh, fucking hell, I forgot his name, the boyfriend, he's mm. looking at the, the fiery bear mm. on the wall. Mm. When he stands up, if you look at the tiles behind him, there's nine nine rows of tiles there. So I know we don't get to see all the tiles there, but there there are symbols scattered around. Yeah, and so there's there's obviously some symbolism in the nine rows. Hmm. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's loads and loads of symbolism. I mean, there's there's like I say, there's fucking there's there's documentaries of this stuff. Um. Did you see the the sister's face in the trees as well? No. Ah. No, I didn't see that. Okay. So, you know when we pan in and see the sister on the floor underneath her computer and she's got the hose pipe gaffer yes, tape to her gaffer mouth? gaffer tape to her mouth, yeah. When we go back and she's become the May Queen, Danny is the May Queen, and she stood on that pillar and they're mm. walking her around and she's balancing and they're walking her up to the the house, mm. and mm. there's a side view of all the crowd behind her and the trees behind that. And she's on a bit of an LSD trip at the time, and things are a bit wavy. If you look in the trees, there's a massive. They've superimposed her sister's face with the hose attached mm. in the trees. Oh, Never noticed that at all. Nice. I I didn't catch it until I saw YouTube videos, but mm. it's there. Hmm. Well, did you, did you notice the um the the de- the four deaths? What they symbolised? Because oh. Josh Josh ends up growing out of the ground, so he's Earth. And then oh. you've got Simon, who's got is he's the wings. He's got yeah. wings, isn't he? So he's air. Air. Yeah. And then um Simon's girlfriend came. She was drenched, weren't Water. she? Water. And how does Christian die? Oh, yeah. He's all that they were. They were murdered by the four elements. Oh, see, that's why I like this. <laughs> that's why I like it. That's that. Oh, I'm all excited again now. <laughs> yeah, you were bringing me down, and now I'm excited again, mate. Mate, I can. I don't mind. You can like what you like, mate. No, it's all I, good. I do like it. I see that mm. sort of thing that makes me go back and watch it. Mm. Yeah, but um. Yeah. Oh, and I've just looked up. Apparently, that breathing thing was called was called um, the the hugger used the breath to reinforce their group because they all synchronize their breathing by taking a deep breath and <gasps> at each other. Ah. So they all synchronize their first out breath. So 
of it. So you become more connected. Mm-hmm. There you go. Brilliant. No, oh, I see. There's there's lots of there's lots of stuff if you go looking for it. But the question is, is how much of it should you look for, and how much of it is necessary for you to enjoy the story? Mm-hmm. Very true. Because like some of that stuff with like the runes is lovely to know. But if that rune had a squiggle and a fucking dollar sign through the middle of it, would it have mattered? <laughs> it's a Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, a Bitcoin symbol. <laughs> would it have mattered? Oh, this man seems to be wearing the symbol of the euro. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it symbolizes what? <laughs> a European financial unity. Um, well, this man was wearing the ruble, and mm. this other man was wearing the dollar. Oh dear. Mm. Oh dear. And this man had some dong in his hand. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's the North Korean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh okay. nice. Yeah. yeah. There you go. North Korean. There's currency. me thinking that you was thinking about penises in hand. <laughs> no, I was. We thinking... all did, and he knew it. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, I don't believe your minds are in the gutter. Jesus Christ! Have you not been on this podcast for nearly twelve <laughs> years? I'm sure you've kind of figured that. <laughs> uh, terrible people. Oh. Cross my hat. Cross my palm with dong. Cross my palm with dong. Can you put some dong in my hand, please? <laughs> Never getting tired of this. Oh God, I've got some dong in my pocket. <laughs> we should take the black dog to North Korea. No. Oh, okay. I, I think that's a no. I, I'm making an executive decision, and in 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 true North Korean style, I will say that this is dictatorship, not a democracy. And especially considering our one listener in North Korea um, has yeah. vanished off the uh, off the map on our stats, mm. I would say no, probably not. Mm-hmm. That's it's probably... the only place you can say I'll get paid in dong. If that's if you want to go and risk imprisonment and possibly a firing squad just so you can make a dong joke, you are most welcome, mate. I will I will record I will record the obituary as you get on the plane. <laughs> it's totally up to you. I so, know, but so, I would have made a dong joke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, if you if you're like a if you're like a bell ringer in North Korea, does that mean to say that it's it's ding dong, <laughs> ding dong bell? <laughs> Is pussy in the well, or is that? It's an old song. Don't look at me like that. I don't really feel it. It's a bloody nursery rhyme, for fuck's sake! <sighs> God's sakes! Right. Has anyone got any final thoughts? No, I think I'm tapped out now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think the audience is going, oh, thank fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, one one last question. Will oh, you guys... no, Metcalf smoked it again. Will you, yeah, fuck. Um, will you guys, off the strength of this, actually be watching mid, um, Hereditary? I can't say it was ever on my list of things to watch in the first place. Um, mm. Only if it's... Uh, I'm told, you have to watch this for Black Dog. Okay. Then yeah. maybe... Same. Okay. Same. I'll keep it in reserve for Halloween. Then. Yeah. Oh, okay. great! Not only because, only because I, 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 I've got, I've got so much to say about that film, but I just, I need other people to have seen it because mm. I know that some people will really like it, and every, every fucking movie Twitter known to man kind of goes, "Oh, Hereditary, it's so fucking good," and it's just like, really, <laughs> okay. Fine. Oh, oh! One thing mm. that really actually did annoy me about this movie. Mm. I, I know we're we're nearly out, but I'm I'm yep. pulling you back. Go on, go on. Um, the Danny's blanket looking like the uh, the the carpet in The Shining. Oh yes, I noticed that as well. <laughs> it's it's a oh okay, Same pattern, we get it. Except different we, color. Yeah, it, it's very similar, wasn't it? Yeah, the 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 hexagonal pattern. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah. I I mean, that annoyed me a little bit. I, just just one of those things. I I don't even notice that sort of shit anymore. I just when I see that when I see that pattern, I just go, oh, it's a shining reference. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wah wah. 
Mm, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like shorthand for I think I'm a horror director. Look at me putting in my Easter egg. He's like, no, no, no. Anyway, right, okay. I think unless anyone's got anything major to say, uh, I think we'll leave it there. Um, yes. So that will be that. Um, right. So as ever, if anyone thinks that we've waffled on and missed a massive salient point or would like to bring up anything from any of the past episodes, obviously you know all the channels. You've got feedback at Black Dog Podcast, which is em- dot com, which is the email. You've got the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast. And of course, you've got Twitter, which is at Black Dog Podcast. Right. So that was Midsommar. Um, an interesting film. Hmm. Definitely. Not necessarily one I'd recommend, but I wouldn't say don't watch it. Just just I'm not going to recommend it. <laughs> I don't know if that, <laughs> that's the same thing. Anyway. Um, but it, you can find it on Netflix. Um, do check it out and let us know what you think. Um, and now it's time to move on to next week's film, which is yours, Darren. And I Indeed believe you've is. actually prepared. You've actually goddamn prepared and had it prepped in your hand, ready to go. I, I certainly do. And we uh, it's been double-checked that it is still free to watch. Um, mm-hmm. And it's on Netflix, so it's definitely going to be free to watch. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I thought that, um, you know, for the past few weeks, we've had uh, sort of like pretty sort of, you know, film films that make you think, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, like some uh, people would argue we haven't thought about it yeah exactly <laughs> exactly you know so sort of like some real sort of deep movies so um i'm gonna go about face and go completely in the opposite direction mm-hmm. for this and i'm taking us back to the 80s yep. yes i am to uh okay. a film that stars uh roy scheider yeah. and uh, malcolm mcdowell um one which launched a thousand airwolves <laughs> um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are going back to watch the one and only Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder. John Badham's Blue Thunder. John Badham's Blue Thunder. Oh, there you go. I'm looking forward to this rewatch. Yes. Well, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to it as well because it's one of those films that I remember liking a lot more than I probably do now. But we will mm. see. We Indeed, will we see. Um, have you seen it before, Elton? I have. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. There, there's only one frame I remember of like cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone looking at cleavage through like um, the the helicopter <laughs> scopes. Yeah. Using That's the all I remember. Mm. Okay. And are you looking forward to seeing it? He says, "I am actually." Long- <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, go on. I I am yeah, yeah. because it, it is a film that I haven't haven't even thought about in God knows how many years thirty mm. odd years yeah so yeah I'm really actually quite excited to go back and see this yeah and what about you Dal you I mean you've yeah. obviously picked it but I mean yeah I'm looking forward to seeing it I can even I'm you know what I I still see the final scenes playing in my head right now okay you know I don't don't spoil that. it don't spoil it because we're watching it again indeed indeed we uh indeed we are cool um yeah um i i have to say i'm curious to watch it i i am very curious to watch it because i remember back in the day this was sort of like roy schneider at the top of his kind of game straight after jaws and straight mm. after French Connection and all those kind of films, and suddenly there he is on a sort of like you know futuristic attack helicopter thing, <laughs> um, right during right at the start of that Glen A. Larson, everything can talk, and it's a it's a black talking car or a black yeah. talking helicopter or whatever. I think Glen A. Larson was the uh, he was the one that gave inspiration to Asylum. Mm. I think. You know, yeah. Let's 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 take a, a film that's really successful and just tweak it slightly so we don't have to get done by copyright. Yeah, you know. exactly. So I remember it being really cool, 
And I remember the helicopter being really cool. And I remember a scene on a bridge with a videotape being really cool. Yeah. But this is this is kind of one of those films that I think might be a bit like um bit like um was it Firefox? <laughs> oh where, where you where you think it where you think it's one thing and you suddenly discover it's not. But um, we shall see. We we shall definitely see. I'm looking at a picture of the helicopter now and it's definitely not as cool as I remember it. <laughs> yeah, it's quite it's quite chunky. It's quite clunky and it's everything. Got, it's got some issues. That's all which, I'm saying. Uh, which is why I think I like this better than I liked mm. Airwolf. Yeah. You know? I don't know, this the this the blue thunder helicopter seems a lot more believable than than mm. Airwolf. So okay. let me get this straight. You've got guns that come out the side of your helicopter right there, but where do the fucking wheels go? Okay? Because they retract, and all of a sudden you've got guns that come out where the wheels fucking go in. So where, where's the wheels now? Well, um, scientific problems with <laughs> Airwolf aside, <laughs> we will be watching Blue Thunder. <laughs> yes, we shall. So, um, yeah, okay. Well, like I say, we shall watch that next week. And hopefully Jim will be back um, from his uh, trip away. So we'll be joined with by him. But until then, th- um, let's do the... Um, oh, I nearly said thank you very much. But let's do the pu- the pimping section. Over to Rogue 2 Network. Oh, oh yes. I, I Once again, I still haven't done any shonkies just yet. I have got some planned. And I will be getting them out very, very soon. Mm-hmm. But it just hasn't happened yet. Okay, okay. Life and stuff getting in the way. But uh, in the meantime, please head over to Apple Podcasts and give the Black Dog Podcast a oh, review on there. You're Do too it. Kind, Do it now. Yeah. You're too kind. You're too kind. Um, and in lieu of um, uh, actually anything for me to promote, let me just say that um, Jim's uh, Nightmares of Nosferatu talking about um, the Shadow of the Vampire, starring Willem Dafoe as Count Orlock, <laughs> <laughs> is is still up on Hypnagoria.com, uh, which, uh, yeah, it's at Hypnagoria 216, The Nightmares of Nosferatu Part 9, The Apocryphal Orlock. Um, and also he has a reading of The Vampire Maid by Hume Nesbitt, uh, which is from the Library of Dreams, and he still has the Commentary Club, which is for Pacific Rim, a.k.a. big robots punching fuck out of big monsters. <laughs> right, so that's that. So, um, yeah, that's all that we got time for, so we'll say goodbye now, but thank you for listening. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Alton, even though Jim's <laughs> not here. Oh, God, I'm on a routine. Ah. <laughs> knee jerk reaction. Yeah, knee jerk reaction. It's just muscle memory now. <laughs> My brain's not really engaged. I'm just saying the words that I always say. It's um, more muscle than memory. <laughs> twisted and evil. Or he doesn't have a neck and he's trying to try and pick a spaceship out of the air but not miss, not, but miss the big spaceship behind the spaceship. <laughs> Fuck me. What a stupid fucking show that is. My uh, God, we'll get to the end in a second, won't we? We will, we will, we will. I'm stopping now. I'm stopping now. I'm pulling the plug. I'm pulling the plug. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you for listening. And uh, we'll see you all next week for Blue Thunder. Until then, stay safe. Take care. Tatty bye. Bye bye. Ta da. And another thing. There's a voice that keeps on calling me. Down the road, it's where I'll always be. Every step I make. I make a new friend Can't stay for long Just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow I wanna settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on Get out of the booth, Jack No, I like it in here